Um, yeah, so today and tomorrow, I'm gonna try to make a tiny platformer and then uh, post the code up on GitHub afterwards. Um, I have a tiny bit of code started for this just to kind of get the, the basics going. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna work on my, so yeah, I'm not working on my normal platformer today. I'm just gonna work on like from scratch, a tiny game. Um, I kind of want to make a tiny like uh, Zelda 2 kind of inspired game because I was talking to people about that uh, earlier this week and it looked really fun. And now I just want to try making a tiny Zelda 2 inspired game. Um, and then I think it'd be fun to like post all the code on GitHub afterwards just to like, here's how I'm making games in C++ right now. Um, and then hopefully upload this stream to YouTube after too, if it's useful to like still see. Um, I don't know how much I'll actually get done in two days. I'm probably only going to stream for like four or five hours a day. And then tomorrow I'm going to stream for a, hopefully most of like morning and afternoon and see how much I get done. And then after that, whatever I have done, I'll just, I'll just post. I don't think it's going to be like a finished game, um, but I think it'll be like enough to be like, here's how you can set some stuff up and make a tiny platform here. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the starting code. Um, so I'll, I'll actually I'll, maybe I'll just make the GitHub uh, public. Um, that's probably easiest. I'm just gonna make it a public repo because uh, whatever. So yeah, I'll just make the, the repo public and then that way you can just um, just pull it. And But I will go over the code anyways as well that I've set up so far, just to like, so everyone's on the same page. This slowdown is really simple. It just um, music lower. Yeah, I can do that too. Let me know if that's too low or how that feels. Um, it's actually fairly simple. Um, we have delta time, so delta time is applied every frame, uh, and then we just have a multiplier on delta time based on assist mode. So at the start of the frame, it says, "Oh, delta time is actually you know 0 0.016 milliseconds." Uh, or seconds or whatever, times um, assist mode speed. So it'll just multiply delta time by 0.5, so then everything just moves half as fast. Um, and that's it. Cool. Well, oh, hey, Colin, thanks. <laughs> Happy New Year's. Um, okay, so yeah. Uh, I'm gonna run through what I've set up so far. Um, so the starting point is like, I have my repo, which is in the video description or the video display there, which is like my little like, C++ framework, which just sets up like drawing and windowing and rendering and stuff. So I'm starting with the bare bones of that. So I'm not starting completely from scratch where I like, you know, open a window by myself and all that stuff. Cause that would take me a long time. Um, so I'm just starting with like, I have my little framework that uses SDL too. Uh, and then it has, it has an open jail and a DirectX renderer. Um, and then the other thing I have is I have this CMake uh, file, which sets up the, the actual game. Um, so just like the basic CMA stuff, and then I set my C++ version to 17, uh, and then I include my blah framework, uh, which is my little thing I just talked about, and then I add the game executable, uh, I link the game, or I link the, the framework to the game so I can actually use it, and then I say if SDL is enabled, uh, I copy the SDL2 DLL to the output directory um, for Windows. Uh, for setting this up for Mac or Linux, it should be straight, pr pretty straightforward too. Um, but I've just set it up for, actually you can probably just set this to your DLL path instead of the Windows one. I've already set this stuff up, so like 
in my in Visual Studio, I have like the CMake setting set up, so I already like link um, the SDL2 DLL and the SDL2, the SDL2 include directories and library, um, which is done for me. So if you're doing this too, you'll have to set up uh, your CMake project so it actually like you know builds the the project for how you want it to be built and wherever your SDL2 directories are and stuff. Um, okay, so that's the CMake file. And um, the next thing that I've already pre-coded is uh, this world um, class, which is, it's, it's like my entity component system. So I'm just gonna check, check. <laughs> Um, okay, so the world class, I basically didn't want to code an entity component system on stream because it would take too long uh, and it's like bug prone and stuff. So I just wanted to like get it out of the way. So I did this the other day. Um, I haven't tested it a lot, so maybe it's still bug prone. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but basically it's entity uh, component in world. Um, I don't have systems. So this is closer to a unity approach where you just have components and components have both behavior and data or a state in them. Uh, so they're closer to a mono behavior. And then entities are what, like, a, it's like a game object. Um, so there's like entity, which has game object, it has position, whether it's active and visible. Uh, and then the world contains entities and components. Um, and then all components for now are uh, updatable and renderable. Um, in my other platform, where I actually have this kind of abstracted out. But for the sake of this, like, simplicity of this project, I'm just making it so that every component can update and can render. Um, just because it's, it's simpler. Um, yeah, so the code for that's already online. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, what it basically is doing, it's like a linked list of entities and components, and then it just like adds them to different entities, and then it just draws them and updates them. Um, so if I go to the actual like world update loop, um, I loop through each component type, and then find the first one, and then just go through the linked list of components and update them. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so to actually get started on this now, that I've explained kind of the setup, um, and like, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free. Um, I'll try to answer them. I am gonna kind of move a little bit fast because I wanna actually try to get stuff done and I don't have, you know, a ton of time, um, but we'll see where we get today. So the first thing I actually need, because this won't run right now, because there's no main, so I need to make a, uh, a new file uh, called main. Uh, and this is gonna be like the entry point. So I'm gonna include blah, which is like my little framework thing, and we're gonna say using space blah, because that's where all the stuff is at. And then in here, which is our main program. Config. So blah has like a little config thing that sets up uh, how the game should run. Um, so And then, yeah, we'll just start with that and see if it actually steps up properly, just to make sure. Okay. So this should just create an, an empty window with nothing in it, which it does. Um, so that's cool. Um, so that's the starting point. So next up, I want to create um, I'm going to create a game class, and the game class is going to kind of contain the whole running of the game. Um, and so, yeah, I'll set that up, and then from there, I'll hook up like an update and render loop to the game. I think Visual Studio is also adding um, the main and like these files to my CMake lists automatically. It is, it adds them in like a really ugly way. Um, and I don't need the H files there. So I'll probably just let it do its thing and then every now and then like clean up um, this file because I really don't like how Visual Studio automatically adds in those like string names and like one giant long line. Uh, so I'll be doing that as I go. Um, and yeah, I'm using Visual Studio, but there's, yeah, you could use whatever exists in make. Um, 
So this is called Tiny Links. I'll just name the namespace TL. So the game is going to have a world in it, which is the thing that contains um, like the entity component system stuff. And then it's going to have uh, update loop render. And I think that's it for now. Um, now, actually, my game currently, or my world class is not copyable. I didn't make it copyable, so I'm going to make this a pointer and it'll instantiate it um, in its constructor. Uh, do you have a game design? I have a very basic game design. <laughs> I'll see how it goes. My basic idea is basically like a, a very simple Zelda 2 inspired game. So it's going to be a little character that can run and it's going to be kind of slow paced and then they can slash in front of them. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have the slashing up and low like, like Zelda 2 does, but I, I, I'll, I'll try that. Uh, how do I want to set this up? Actually, I think I'll just make this. This can just be a character. And then game will just always exist. Um, so I'll make a, a non-minus name space. Um, Actually, now I'll use tiny tank. And then uh, I need an update. My main update loop is going to call game.update. I could put like the actual game code into here and like not make a game class, but I just like having a game class for keeping things kind of organized in a nice place. Um, but it is a bit redundant having like, you know, this follow through. Um, these are C pointers right now, so they're not like function pointers, so I have to like reference uh, these directly. I'm gonna add game.startup and game.shutdown. So game is kind of a singleton right now, but I'm not actually making one. Because um, I don't need to yet. Okay. Um, okay, so game needs... Okay, cool. So now I'll implement these into the game file. CQP. Uh, what keyboard switches I'm using? I actually don't know. I bought this keyboard. Um, whoops, tiny. Um, it's like, like an uh, LG keyboard, and I'm not really sure what switches it has, unfortunately. Uh, I like it though. It's, it's been good. Okay, so here's our setup stuff. Um, the next thing I want to do before the game actually does anything is I want to be able to load assets. Um, so right now I don't have any way to load assets, but I'm going to load them all in the startup and then dispose them all in the shutdown of the game. Um, and like since this game is going to be pixel art and it's going to be fairly simple, um, I'm not going to do kind of any fancy asset loading stuff. It's just going to like load everything in startup and then throw away everything that shut down and it's not gonna like be, do like do anything fancy of like loading stuff as you request it or like any threaded loading. It's just gonna like load everything and then throw it all away when it's done. Uh, so, cause it's just, that's just the simplest, simplest approach right now. Um, but I think for that, I'm gonna make a content file where all the content can live. Um, yeah, okay, Let's start with that. Yeah, I have code already to import a sprite file, so I will be using that. It's in my um, library. Um, so inside my blah library, I have like uh, an a sprite loader. So I will use that, because I'm gonna use a sprite 
for all the sprite data because um, it's like my favorite pixel art editor and then also I can like combine like I can have animations in a sprite and just load them into the game directly without having to do anything which I like a lot um, okay so content um, this is basically gonna be a singleton I think I'm gonna make it doesn't really need to actually be a singleton but it's gonna have all static methods um, yeah uh, so the first thing I want to do is have a file path, which will return um, this, and I need to include, and I'm going to use, this is not generally a good idea, but since this is so small and stuff, I'm going to use my blah namespace here because I use it everywhere and it's, I don't want to take blah everywhere, even in header files, even though general practice is better to like actually in the header files. Like, but this this case, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so this file path thing um, is going to basically find the content path and just return that. Um, I'm going to do something also kind of hacky with this, um, where basically I'm going to just look up directories until it finds the content path. Because right now my builds are going into like a a subdirectory of like. I don't know, like out slash build slash x64 slash windows slash whatever. Um, but I don't want to copy my content to the bin directory every single time. So I'm just going to like at start up the first time you request the path, um, it's going to just like find the content directory. Explain what I'm doing here in a second. <clears throat> so basically, I'm just taking my current directory, which is the app path directory, which is where the execute executable is running, and I'm just searching up uh, over and over again until I actually find uh, the content path. directory we just like end the whole application we just support uh, and then finally I'm going to uh, I'll just print uh, print my the path to see if it's working okay so I guess we'll quickly see if that's working. So in the game startup, we'll just get the path the first time. Um, and we can do that by just calling content.path. We should just output our path. I think everything's hooked up right. Uh-oh, I'm able to find. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Huh. 
see how I screwed this up already. <laughs> yeah, I think I've, I've already typed LT once instead of TL. Um, I did that by accident. Like my other project is called like Lone Tower right now, which is just like a temporary name, but then the namespace is LT. And then there's like called Tiny Link, which is the namespace is TL. And I did not think about that at all. What did I do wrong with this? I actually wrote this code beforehand because I was knew this was gonna throw me. So I might just like copy and paste it and see what I did differently. Because I, I knew like this code, I was like, I'm gonna fuck this code up. So I'm just gonna copy this. This is like the one piece of code that I was like did beforehand because I was like, I'm probably gonna screw this up. What did I do wrong? I don't even see how there's a different thing that I just wrote. Path normalize content upstream. Huh. Okay, well I found it that time. I don't know what my code was said to do. What did I do wrong? Assume that I just had a typo in there. What? Welcome to Code and Live. Oh, this doesn't start empty, but that shouldn't matter. It should start empty. Okay, not sure what that's about, but I'm gonna move on because I want to actually make games. Um, but yeah, it finds the kind of directory by just searching up, and then I output just to make sure that it's actually finding it which it is now. Oh, up with those C string. That's the problem. Thank you. It just wasn't implementing that. That's my bad. Thanks. Cause it was just passing it. That's what it was. It was passing the file path, which is like not a C string into this format thing, which is expecting a C string. And I can't cast it automatically cause this is like old school printf or whatever. That makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. So that gets the path to the content directory. Um, and then at that point, let me see what I have now. So, okay, so next I'm gonna add a um, static uh, sprite font. Uh, font. And then actually I wanna add another static load. Studio doesn't know how to do that. Okay. Um, so I have these load functions. So the first thing I'll load as uh, a font, just so I can start drawing some text. And I actually already have a font in here that I just got from the internet. Um, so I'm gonna start with that. So um, when you load, it's gonna say sprite font, or font equals a uh, sprite font. Uh, and then I'm gonna combine my path with uh, font slash that. And then the size I think is 16 pixels. And then my char set I want to be. This thing, the way this spray font right now works is it like pre builds it. It uh, builds the font into a single bitmap ahead of time. So you have to tell it like what characters you want in the font. Um, at some point I'd like to make one that's dynamic that like automatically just like renders the text as you request it, but for now this is, this is how this one's set up. Um, okay, so that should create the font. And then here, we actually don't need to do anything yet because we actually honestly don't even really need an unload for this game because it's just going to unload when the game stops. And when the game stops, the whole application closes and everything's gone, so like I don't really need an unload. Um, but I guess I'll just, I'll just do it anyways just for... Yeah, in like a, if I added like an editor on top of this or something, then you would actually need to unload because when the game starts up, then you run it and then it shuts down, but the application doesn't actually close and then you want, because like, you have the editor still running and stuff. So uh, in normal like circumstances, you'd actually want like a nice like 
unload where you properly shut everything down. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is this game is going to be a pixel art game. It's going to be pretty small. Um, so I want to have like a texture that the game gets rendered to before I draw it to the actual uh, window. Uh, and this, there's like two ways to kind of do pixel art. Is one you can draw it to a tiny texture first and upscale that texture. The other alternative is to use a matrix of some kind and like uh, scale everything up as you draw it. I don't like the second approach because when you rotate sprites or do anything, nothing clamps to pixels anymore. Or like if a character moves at floating positions, they are no longer going to be like um, they'll be. You can see that they're rendered at like a half pixel, and I don't really love that. It's an, it's an aesthetic choice. Um, so I'm going to make a buffer first. So uh, here we don't need this. Let me just do load. Would I add in later on? Um, not for this project, probably. I think for this one, I'm going to keep it super simple to get it done in two days. Um, Cause I don't think I have the time to be able to like add an actual custom editor for this game. I'm probably just gonna make the like the levels in like a text file. Um, but yeah, in the future I could do that, that'd be fine. I, I, I could just post the in GUI code I have set up for my um, other game. Uh, okay, so loader content. And then we wanna create a, create a frame buffer. And I want the game to be this resolution. Okay. Okay, so now in our render loop, what we're going to do is we're going to draw so the gameplay first to this frame buffer. And then after that, we're gonna draw the frame buffer to the screen. Uh, to draw stuff, I'm using, I have a sprite batcher. Um, so I'm using a sprite batcher. Let's call batch. Um, batch doesn't need to be created. It's just like created automatically when you start drawing stuff. So first, uh, so draw gameplay stuff. So um, there's no gameplay stuff to actually draw yet. I'm just gonna draw some text and then we'll see if it scales up and I'll clear our buffer as well. So buffer will say clear, or like, um, I don't know where my, don't know where my autocomplete went, but Studio just decided to remove that for me because it's loves loves that. Um, or I typed something wrong, I guess. I don't think they did. Um, okay, so we'll clear our buffer to red so we know that it's actually drawing. And then I'll just draw some text really quickly with my uh, oh with my batcher. Yeah, my autocomplete is just gone. <laughs> uh, I think I know the first field. Yeah, is uh, content font, and then we'll say hello world. And back to like the, the two. color white. I think that's right. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, okay. Uh, did I ever try C for game dev? I did. Uh, I, I tried it a little bit, and I do like it a lot. I actually like C as a language a lot more than C++, but I, I just, I want, like, yeah, I like, I want a tiny bit more to C, which is basically, I mean, you could use C++ in this way, but I, I want namespaces really badly. Um, and I do want like, like fields and stuff um, on, I like fields on structs and stuff, but I do like the simplicity of C a lot. And I like that you can actually like understand the entire spec and just know, like, I know the C spec now, I know how it works. Whereas C++ is like a disaster uh, monster. Um, that like you'll never understand fully, I think. I mean, you could probably spend two decades and pretty understand it, but like, I feel like there's always like weird stuff hidden there that like comes out somewhere and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> but yeah, I, there's a trade-off. I, I, I really like, like I do like it when like, you know, writing destructors and having objects be cleaned up automatically. I do like that because then I don't have to care about it. But the trade-off sometimes is really ugly. And I like how C is just like, nah, like none of that. It's just just simple, like, you know exactly what's happening all the time, because there's, yeah. Uh, okay, then I render my batch to my buffer. 
So I'm clearing the buffer to red, drawing some text there just to see, and then uh, drawing the batch, which is the text so far, to the buffer. Um, now the buffer is drawn, I'm going to switch to drawing the buffer back to the actual screen. Um, actually, there's one thing that I want to do to my batch here before I begin. Like whether I, I don't know if auto is working for this. Maybe I just do have a problem that I'm not noticing. Uh, I want my sprite batch to use nearest texture filtering um, because I don't want like the pixel art to be all blurry when it scales it up. So this is just saying like, hey, like when you draw textures, use nearest neighbor uh, sampling. What does string mean? It means, or what does str mean? It means string. So saying draw a string. I could call it string instead, maybe. Um, but I call it just str, which honestly it could be maybe named better. It could be called text. Um, I think I did do text because my texture ones are called text when it draws a texture, and then I was constantly writing te like and then hitting tab or whatever, and it would just like go to this, and I was like, no, I want text. So I think I named it to string instead. But maybe text is a better name anyways. Um, not sure. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I'm drawing the batch so far, and actually, after I'm done drawing the batch to the gameplay buffer, I want to clear it because I'm going to reuse this batch to draw the buffer back to the screen. If the the batch just like builds an, uh, a mesh inside of itself, so if I don't clear it, it'll draw the same mesh again, like to the other thing, like the string and stuff. So I want to clear the batch after I'm done with it. Um, so then we'll draw the buffer to the screen. Uh, I'm going to clear the back buffer now, which is like I think the app the back buffer. I'm going to clear this one to black. And then um, what I'm going to do. Yeah, Rust seems really cool. Um, okay. So clear the screen. Yeah, FNA is really good. Um, FNA is like amazing. Um, okay, so clear the back buffer and then I'm going to do batch dot uh, text for now. I don't know why my batch isn't auto including. It's kind of. Oh, because I'm not including. This is battle, battle here. This is making so much more sense now. I don't know why I didn't complain in the header file. Now I should, yeah, yeah, auto you know, okay. So now I want to draw the buffer uh, attachment zero. So frame buffers have multiple attachments, um, like, or texture, like render targets or frame buffers have multiple attachments. Um, it's like when you're using 3D rendering, you often want multiple attachments. In this case, my frame buffer, because I created a default one, only has a single attachment, which is like a single color texture on it. So basically I'm saying like, hey, like clear the back buffer and uh, then draw our gameplay buffer, but the first the first attachment of it, which is a color a color texture. Um, that's just kind of the way 3D renderers work, is they usually have this, you can attach multiple render targets, or you can attach multiple textures to a render target and then draw to that. Um, so that's what I'm doing. In this case, our, our buffer only has a single texture in it, so I'm just grabbing the first one, which is a color one. Uh, and then for now, I'm gonna just draw at zero and then white. So I'm not going to scale it up yet, um, but we'll see. I'll need to scale up in a second because this is going to look really weird. And then we'll render to our uh, app back buffer. And then we're going to clear it. Okay, clear because I want to make sure it's clear for the next loop. Um, so this is not going to look like much, but if I run this, this should show something unless I have compile errors. And if I don't... Yeah, okay. So there's, there's our game. So it says hello world. Um, and little text down there, um, and it's tiny in the corner of our screen. And if I scale this around, it seems fine. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to scale it up into our full screen. Um, and the thing I want to do is I want to make it so that it, it, it fits it to the center. So if I like make my window uh, not a direct like uh, aspect ratio of this, I want it to be centered still. 
or with black borders either on the top and bottom or the left and right. Um, so that's the next thing. So to do that, we want to figure out our scale. Um, and we're going to just take the window scale and the back buffer scale and just like, you know, figure out which one we should use and scale it up. Um, so scale is going to equal the minimum. Where's the maximum? I think it's the minimum uh, between um, app, so back buffer width divided by our buffers width. Is that right? I think that's right. Uh, and then I want this to be a floating value because I'm going to float. I'm gonna, I don't want it to snap to pixels. And then app back buffer height divided by float buffer. So that should give us our scale for how, so I'm like taking the, the width of the, of the screen divided by our buffer. So it's like, if our screen is like hundred and our buffer is 10, then it'll be 10. That was a bad example. But if our buffer is hundred and, or the backup is hundred and the buffer is 20, then it'll be five, whatever. So that should get us our scale. Um, and it takes the minimum one. So it doesn't like fill up too much of the screen. Yeah, white text on pure red screen, done. Um, okay, so that's our scale. So now if I just scale this up, so I'm going to scale this by using, I'm going to push a matrix. Um, and then we'll say mat, three times two, uh, create, I'll do create translation. And for this we'll do, we'll keep it at zero, zero for now. Or create transform. Uh, and we'll keep it at zero, zero. And origin will be zero for now. And then we'll say our scale is x2, one times scale, and then no rotation. And then after we're done drawing with the screen, we'll pop. Let's see how that looks. It should just scale it up. Yeah, okay, there's our full art, art game. Um, there's gonna be some weird stuff with like, uh, yeah, like it won't, it won't, uh, it's like not centered. So it's like always move left. Also, the text seems really big to me. I wasn't expecting it to be that big because this, this buffer is 320. I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'm drawing the text really big. Or maybe the text is supposed to be 8 by 8. That might make more sense. Let's see if this makes more sense. I bet it's 8. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it was just doubled. Okay. Uh, cool. So we're rendering that, but it needs to be centered. Um, and to center it, I'm going to get the center of the screen. Um, it's going to be back to app, back buffer, width, oops, height, and five by two. And then we'll say our buffer center, um, buffer center is equal to back to um, buffer, width, buffer, height. Um, so that's the center of our screen and then our center of our buffer. So I'm going to draw the buffer at the center of our screen. And then I'm going to set the origin to the center of the buffer. And then that should center up everything. So now, hello world, and if I scale this like a weird size, it should keep it centered. Um, which is good. Okay, so that's all working. Uh, let me catch up on chat a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm glad that Blau looks fairly straightforward. Um, it's still a very work in progress, but I've been enjoying working on it. And like, I've kind of been learning C++ through it because I haven't done a lot of C++ before this, like off and on over the years, but it's been a fun experience. Um, and I'm trying to find a good mix of like some modern C++ stuff and not the really ugly uh, C++ stuff. Cause uh, you know, I, yeah, I like, I like some old school C++ stuff a lot um, and some of the principles there. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to have a good mix of everything. Um, okay. So that's, that's our game so far. It's pretty cool. Um, probably could release it. 
I'm gonna commit this so far just so that it like, yeah, we'll commit every now and then. So adding screen, or adding gameplay buffer. Actually, I'm gonna fix our CMake lists first because it's super ugly. And actually, we don't even need that one because this is not a library. Okay, so I'm gonna commit that with uh, GitHub Desktop, which is not a great application. Um, it's fine. I don't know how to use Git command line, so yeah, never learn. Do I actually use any C++ 17 features? Uh, yeah, I think I, I can't remember where. I think in blah, I use some somewhere, but I don't remember. Um, I started using, I mean, I like, there's a few C sharp C++ features rather. I like, like I like uh, static, like constant, uh, constant expression and like in 13 or in, and like be able to align, so like assign that stuff in line or like a float or whatever, and you can assign them. Cause I, I think in like beforehand, you couldn't assign these in like header files and stuff. Um, you have to like, yeah, do other stuff. Um, so I like that, but yeah, I'm trying to think what I actually use. Uh, in some other projects I was doing, like, I can't even remember. Yeah, actually, I don't know. I do use some stuff, but I don't know where it is or what it was. So it could probably be C++ 14 and it'll probably be fine. Um, oh, I think the one thing is I'm, I am using uh, the file uh, file system stuff. Although that could also be swapped out because I'm using file system stuff on Windows and then not file system stuff on, um, where is that? That was an internal uh, STL2. Yeah, on Windows I'm using uh, file system thing, which I'm pretty sure is C++ 17. Um, but then on Mac and Linux, I'm using like uh, just Unix file system stuff. So that could probably be swapped out pretty easily. I think that's I think that's the only thing now that I'm trying to think about it. Uh, do you want to tell you what the type in the Git console? Yeah, thanks. That'd be great. <laughs> no, I mean I should probably learn it at some point. I know like. I know like Mercurial better. That's what I used for years. And then uh, Bitbucket died and now I'm basically using GitHub. I mean, GitHub is really good, but it does mean I have to learn Git and I just haven't learned Git. Um, okay, okay. So next is actually making some gameplay stuff um, and probably some sprites. I might make a really quick sprite just to like get it loading and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I think that makes the most sense now to get sprites loading. So I have a sprite open already. Uh, I think this should be 16. I'll make it 32 by 32 because this is probably going to be the player. Um, and for now, I'll just make them a blob. Um, there. And we'll call this Actually, on this note, before I dive into this, I'm going to get some more water. And then, yeah, and then I will be back and I'll start working on actual, like, I think the next I'll do loading sprites so we can get sprites loading and like rendering. And then I'll work on actual gameplay objects. So after that, I'll probably write a simple, I think the first three components are probably a player component, a collider component, and a sprite component. So I can actually like, draw a sprite, have it colliding with stuff, and then the player like moving. I think those are the main things. Um, okay, so I'm gonna quickly grab some water and then I'll be back. Okay, so next up is, yeah, I think sprite loading. Um, and I guess I need an idea of sprites first. So maybe I'll add a new folder called like, Assets, and I'll call one called you know, sprite. And I'll add a new CP file. Sprite. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen the test sprite in Rivals of Faith. Is it like a, like a block? That's kind of like the the one in Smash Bros. Two. Is like the the little like punching bag character, with the face on it.
Yeah, I'm gonna use a simple ECS. Um, so I, I already wrote a simple one, which is on, in, in the GitHub, um, and I'll show it more like once I get there. But it's pretty, it's like pretty bare bones, um, and I'll explain it once I get to it. But yes, I will use a very simple. It's like a very simple ECS. Um, so the sprite can have uh, animations. And it's gonna have also frames. Uh, and the frame just has a float duration and it has a subtexture. Uh, okay, and then animation has a string name. And it has a list of frames. I think that's it. Does an animation need anything else? I don't think it does. Okay, and then this actual sprite just has a list of animations. And I think it has a. It's gonna have an origin, I think. I think that's all the sprite needs. What are these pregma ones directives? Uh, yeah, they're header header guards. So, if not def, yeah, exactly. Like if not def, so um, I don't think it's actually part of the standard at all. It's just being like it's. I think it's a doc. Like I, I've never seen a C plus C plus plus compiler that does not support it. But it's the same as you know. Yeah, if not def, like right. Exactly the same thing, um, but yeah, I don't want to type that every time. And Pragma once I, I haven't run into a case where it's not supported yet. So, um, okay, this is pretty simple sprite class. Does it actually? I don't even know if it needs an implementation. Oh, it. Yeah, I don't think it actually needs an implementation. It doesn't. It could just be a struct. It's like pretty dead simple. I'm trying to think if it needs other stuff in it, but I maybe the sprite itself would have a name. I think that's kind of it. So yeah, I won't even do this implementation file because I don't don't think it needs anything. Um, okay, so then content we are going to have a list of uh, sprites. Um, and I think I'm just going to look up sprites. Like every time you request a sprite, you just search through the thing and find it. I don't think I'm gonna do anything fancy with that. Um, yeah, so prob I will probably add a static. Um, find like a way to get sprites. Do you already have an idea for who the character will be, or a theme in general? I'm not totally sure, actually. I'm gonna see where I get. It's gonna be a little adventurer, and it's because it, uh, my, my kind of base inspiration is like Zelda 2, and I think you're gonna like go into a castle, kind of like, and, and fight a boss is my idea. And you start off outside and fight a few enemies and then go into the castle, and then I think it's gonna be pretty pretty dead simple though, but we'll see, we'll see what it turns into. Um, it would be fun to have some kind of stronger theme, but I think we'll get we'll, we'll get there as we get there. Um, but yeah, it would be fun to do that. Okay, load. Let me 
And then we're going to load sprites. Um, so for sprites, I'm going to load them entirely from a sprite files. Um, and we're going to use tags as their animation names. Um, okay. Vampires maybe? Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be fun. Um, okay, so to load sprites, we're going to loop through all the a sprite files in the sprites folder. Okay, so now I want to get, so then the, the name is going to be the file path minus this path. Um, so string name is going to equal to it. String that starts at with dot string plus sprite path. Okay. I think that'll work. I'm just gonna log out and see what I'm getting um, when we load up. We should just it should just put the player. Yeah, it does. Okay. So I'm looping over the sprite directory and finding every single sprite, and then I'm taking their name, which is like their name is going to be their file name relative to the sprite directory. So if it's in a subfolder, it'll be like subfolder slash name. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have the name and then um, I'm gonna skip any files that don't end in a sprite file. So if it ends with um, Cause I, I'm not sure what else is gonna be in there yet. Probably nothing, but just in case. Um, okay, so next is I want to actually load the file. So we have the name. Um, and I think I kind of need to do this in two steps, which is a little bit weird because I need to be able to build the sprite at like the, the atlas, which is everything that's going to be added to an atlas. And then I also need to um, create the sprites, but the sprites can't be created until the atlas is created. But the atlas can't be created until I load the sprites. So it's kind of this weird thing. So I'm going to basically do this in two passes. Um, so I think I want a struct called like, um, uh, I don't know if this uh, sprite, sprite info, I guess, which is just going to have an a sprite data and a string name. So I'll start by loading the a sprite file. Um, I need to make a list of all the sprite infos. I'll put this in the thing. Um, yeah. And okay, so I'll start by saying sprite info dot um, a new one, which is going to be. A sprite, which will load from the file. I don't know why it takes us that, whatever. I don't like that it takes a C string, we should take the file path. And then the name will be new. Is that gonna work? Um, okay, we'll just make this work then. A sprite, whoops. This part's going to be kind of the ugliest part, I think. Um, I actually don't need that. Like that. And then we'll push back. Okay. So we'll load it. We'll get all the sprites first into this 
struct that I just made. Uh, get all the exploits. And then we'll build an atlas. Um, so at the start of this, we're actually going to uh, I think I have a texture ref called Atlas. Yeah, and I have this thing called a packer, and a packer takes sprites and combines them into an Atlas. So what I'm basically doing is like, I don't want to, like in modern graphics stuff, whenever you draw with a different texture, you basically have to end your current draw call and begin a new one. So I don't want to, every single time I draw each individual sprite on the screen, I don't want it to be swapping between textures. I don't want it to be like, oh, um, you know, draw the player texture and then swap, like end draw call, start a new draw call, draw the, the terrain single block texture and then draw the second single block texture. I want it to be like one pass. So just like draws all the gameplay stuff in one go. And to do that, I combine all the textures into one big texture. And normally you do this like as a um, pre-build step of your game, like before you run your game the first time, you like build it into a big atlas and then it's, it's there forever. Um, since this game is so tiny and the sprites are so tiny, I'm gonna do this on the fly every single time you run. So whenever the game boots up, it's just gonna like pack the atlas on the fly and then just leave it there. Um, because that's like a lot faster. Uh, not faster in terms of the game running, but faster in terms of like making a tiny thing. Um, and I think the packer, I don't really care about any of this. Padding, spacing, two. No, I'll say padding for one, just in case. Um, okay, so now we're going to loop through all the A-Sprite files that we've loaded and add them to the packer. So how are we going to do this? Um, loop through every single frame, I guess. So the A-Sprite file has frames and we'll add each frame to the atlas. So for example, this A-Sprite file only has a single frame called idle, nothing, it's a single frame. And I'll add that to the packer. And then it'll, so I have to loop through every single frame. Um, my A-Sprite file stuff already like gets the bitmaps automatically from that. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, do we use a content pipe link for a Celeste development? Yeah, we use like a really simple one, um, kind of a, like a, XNA, the engine we used actually has a content pipeline, but we didn't use it because I don't, it's not great in my opinion. Um, so we opted just to use our own simple thing. And it it's kind of a mix between a like an asset pipeline and just like pre-baking a bunch of stuff and then loading that instead. So uh, Celeste like pre-bakes textures, um, some shader stuff, um, some dialogue stuff. It kind of like does, I, I just have a separate application called like it's just called like Celeste Packer or something. And it just like takes the different files. It, it, it turns files into like a binary for or levels into a binary format, uh, textures into like an atlas, uh, dialogue into like a simplified, uh, quicker to parse dialogue format, stuff like that, that happens ahead of time. And then the game, when the game loads, it just kind of does, it does basically this where it just like loads files uh, as, as it goes. And Celeste also loads 90% of stuff up front, with the exception of like, uh, overworld stuff and like complete screens and so on. <laughs> uh, I've coded this stuff a lot. I had to copy and paste once. I had to copy this like this thing for my finding my content directory because I typoed something, which is the one piece of code that I had pre-written because I was like, I'm gonna screw that up somehow because I don't know why. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna add this Sprite, oh, it needs an ID. How do I do this? Why did I give this an ID? I think we'll just have a counter. Like whatever. Um. Yeah, I think counter is fine. I'm trying to think if there's anything weird with this. I don't like that this is a you went 64. I could write a hash function, I guess, for the name. Um. 
Yeah, we're just gonna have a counter. That's fine. Basically, like every single time I pack, like, uh, pack a texture, I need to give it a unique ID so I can get it later. And I'm not sure why it's a UN64. I kind of want to change the API so it's like a string name or something, because a UN64 is kind of annoying because it's harder to assign. I could just like you know make it a string and then it's easier to look up later. But for this, we'll do it like this. Um, Um, so pack index, um, and then I don't want path, I'll come back to that in a second, and then pack index, we can come in here, uh, and then info dot pack index is going to be that, so I can get it later. Um, okay, so we're going to pack actually an image, which I think the frame should already have, which is an image, yeah. Okay, so I loop through our A sprite and add each frame of the A-Sprite file into our packer. Okay, that's that. And then finally, um, I want to actually build our Atlas. Um, and I actually need a vector. Um, A spray function, yeah. I'm using um, it's not an SDK, but it's like my own little framework. So it's it's online on GitHub. It's in my video. It's not description, but my video uh, the bottom bar there. You can see my GitHub. I have a little like framework that has stuff like A sprite loading and so forth. I'm realizing now though that I want a way to easily look up textures, and I don't have a good way. Yeah, this is this is fine though. I'm just gonna make a vector of subject here. Okay. So subtextures are going to be subtextures of the atlas, um, and I'll keep them index values for now, even though I don't love that. But we'll see. See how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Um, okay. So now we're gonna build the atlas, um, which is I just do hacker Pack the atlas and then we get the texture, which is so our texture or our atlas texture is going to be equal to hacker dot pages. I need to create a texture out of it. Uh, yeah, equals uh, texture create. Uh, and there are file, it's not a file, it's going to be from a image. Okay, so what I'm doing is the packer is going to build the atlas into a single bitmap, and then I'm taking the bitmap, which is page zero of the packer, and turning it into a texture and giving it to our atlas. Um, packer could have multiple pages if it runs out of space. So if it gets to a certain size and it can't fit more textures into it anymore, it makes another page. I'm going to assume there's only ever one page because there almost always ever only will be one page because um, the game is tiny. <laughs> Yeah, I copy and paste from older projects, which are copied from Stack Overflow, exactly. Um, okay, so build the atlas. And then we want to get all the subtextures out of it. Um, and create subtextures. Um, and then entry dot uh, packed rectangle and entry dot frame and then self texture that could be I could inline that but that's okay for now okay so we got all our sprites we added them to the atlas we packed the atlas and now finally I'm gonna make the actual sprite asset which is like yeah, has actual the actual frames and stuff with the live texture. So this texture is like part of the GPU now. It's like in graphical memory. So now I can actually create our sprites which reference that. 
So we're gonna hit loop over our sprite infos that we've created. Um, and then we're gonna create a new sprite for each one. So sprite, um, sprite dot name is gonna equal info dot name. And sprite dot origin is going to equal sprite to zero. Um, a sprite has this feature that's kind of weird, but I like called slices. Um, and a slice, you can just, just like make a rectangle and then give it a pivot point. Uh, I'm gonna make 16 and 32. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's like a pivot point right here now. And then I use that data for like the origin of the sprite when I'm rendering. So that way I don't need to like assign the origin in code. I can just say like, oh, like take the A sprites slice property and, and put it there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is say if the info.a sprite um, has a slice and info.a sprite slices zero um, has a pivot point, then we'll set the sprite origin is it going to be a disgusting line? Oops, that's not kind of the size. Um, it's going to be info that is right slices zero dot pivot dot x. Yeah, and pivot dot y. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. I like code all day and then. I'll code all day and then be like, that was a lot of that was a lot of good code. And then I'll be like, well, time to work on my side project, which is just more coding. Um, Cause I don't know what else to do with my life, I guess. Um, okay. So now I'm gonna add the uh, animations to this sprite. So for animations, I'm using a sprites tags. Um, so these tags discern um, what animations will exist in the sprite. So I can add more tags and then it'll have more animations. So I'm gonna loop through every tag in um, sprite for info.sprite.tags. I don't need this code at all. Um, and then so I'll say, um, to go to, I need to find the info, is right, frames, i, dot, duration. And duration in a sprite is in milliseconds, integer milliseconds, I want it in seconds, so I'm gonna divide it by a thousand. Um, and then the image is going to equal our subtextures, uh, and it's gonna be, this is kind of funky, but it's gonna be our info, dot, pack, index, plus i. Um, because before, I, the way I ordered these, I think it, oh, do these keep order? I don't know if entries are in order, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, it's probably not. Okay, actually, what I'm gonna do then, um, Yeah, I actually don't know if the entry IDs are, like if the entries are stored in order from the packer. So I'm gonna assign the IDs, or the indexes explicitly. Um, and then at the end, I can find the subtexture by looking up our pack index plus I, um, cause that's what it's gonna be. Is this broadly similar to how you started up your current server? Yep, this is like very similar to how I started up my current project. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of a better name, so I just called it Blah, because I was like, I don't care about spending forever trying to think of a name for this, so I'll just call it Blah and move on. Cool. 
because I just wanted the code. Um, okay, there's all our frames or animations. Uh, and then And then sprite.animation.pushback. Uh, anyway. I'm building this on the stack and copying it, but I mean, it's so tiny, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so add sprites. So at this point, oh, then at the very end of this, I need to say um, sprites.pushback. Sprite. Um, okay, so now at this point, I should have uh, all my sprites loaded into an atlas uh, that I can draw. I'm gonna add a bunch of frames to this just to like see. I'll make one of these faces angry just for fun. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna just make a function to get the to get the current atlas so I can draw it to see if it's working. So we'll return atlas. Oh, that's like a gonna be a conflict, I guess. Um, maybe these should be like named something. I don't know like what like static underscore. I don't know what a good like I use m underscore for like member names. Maybe it should be. I'll just call this Sprite Atlas and not even think about that it's named something else. Okay, not worry about it. Um, okay, let's see if this actually is packing stuff and working. So in my game, well, I guess I can run and see if it crashes first or something. It does crash. Wow, something explodes with my string. Wow, oh, something that's very weird. Is this a bug with like my... Maybe a bug with my... Um... With my string code. I've been using the string code a lot, so that's kind of weird that something... What's wrong with it? Failed when it copied. When it copied layers. Mm, this is weird. I'm gonna ignore this for now. Cause I don't know what I did wrong. Um. Yeah, this is really weird because I copy this stuff all the time. I don't really want to get into like what's wrong with my string code. I guess I could just like, what I probably should do is just switch to like the C++ standard library string instead of trying to write my own. Huh. All seems fine. Yeah, I have it in the copy constructor and it's copying the frames. Or is it copying the layers? It's copying the layers. That's very strange. Hmm. I actually don't know. Don't know what's wrong with this, so I'm gonna ignore it and come back to that. That's very strange. I do almost this exact thing, I think, somewhere else, but for now I just won't copy. I think it's happening here, I push back into this. So for now, I'll just ignore the copy until I figure out what the hell is wrong with my name. That's kind of scary, it's weird. Wow, 
Wow. What is happening? I must have broken something really bad here, because this is- I do this kind of stuff all the time and I've never had a problem with this. Hmm. Yeah, like my string copy is like... Or my buffer copy is maybe? <laughs> Big error. This is a weird error. Back. What is happening here? I don't feel like pushback should be calling me place back. Yeah, this is that if it's pushing back copy. Something wrong with my back here? What is going on? I haven't had this problem before. Welcome to me debugging my string class. Or my vector class. I should just use the standard vector probably is what this is telling me. Wow. Memory. Huh. Some pretty wild, pretty wild problems here. It's happening with texture deref's from a shared pointer. This is fun. <laughs> Welcome to uh, me debugging one of my vectors. Fuck. Um, this isn't really what I wanted to get into. I should probably. This is weird because I use this vector like I've used, I've used this vector for like six months and never had problems. I don't know what I suddenly did that like exploded it. Uh, I started this project today, um, but I have like the framework stuff that I'm using from like the last six months or so. Um, I think something's being copied in like I think this vector function is just like. I think this vector function is messed up because it's like, here we go. It's taking a copy, it's taking a const reference, I think. And then it's placing back, which in place back takes it args and it's forwarding those args. That seems fine, but maybe it's not. Okay, wait, let me just switch this to, because that's forwarding, let me just make this an actual copy. Sprite frame. Sorry about this. This is very strange. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what Rob said. Ugh, I should probably. I mean, this is the this is what you get for like writing your own vector class instead of using the standard, I guess. Some strange stuff happening here. Like, item seems valid. Name looks fine. Frames looks fine. Share point count. Yeah, it's copying the animation of the vector. Yeah, losing half, yeah. This is this is what I get. Um, it's taking this animation and pushing it back to the list of animations. Um, let me try making the frames nothing. I'm trying to see what is the actual. Okay. 
something's very messed up. I think the copy can. Wow. Yeah, something's extremely fucked. Okay. Um. It's pushing the item back, and then it copies the vectors in there. You know, I'm not sure what I did wrong. So I'm gonna avoid, I'm just gonna ignore this also until uh, I'll debug this tonight after I'm off stream and see if I can fix it. Um, so I don't know, like, I. Because this way, this will just avoid the copies. So I just won't do any copies. So I'll just add them directly into the. Um, into the uh, into the vector, and then the vector won't be copied at all. But I need to figure that out. I don't know what what is going on there. That's like some some weird some weird stuff here. Um, but I don't really need to solve it for right now. But that's scary. Okay. I'll come back to figuring out what that's about. Yeah, tonight. So yeah, we're back in ways. Why is there a link in here? My love. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh, removes it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I missed the context of what that was at first. Um, okay, so we're gonna move on. I don't know why that's happening. I'm gonna debug it tonight later when I'm off stream because I don't I don't want to like spend the whole stream like checking, figuring out what's wrong with my vector class that hasn't been wrong for six months until suddenly today. Um, okay, so back to stuff. I'm gonna draw the atlas and see if it's actually drawing it properly. So I'm gonna draw our atlas to uh, the texture. Uh, and I'll grab our content atlas. And just draw it at zero color white, and then I'll move the hello world to further down. Yeah, remove curse code. Okay, cool. So our atlas is clearly working um, because you can see that these guys are all there. Um, so that's cool. Um, so it packed all the frames. And hopefully made a sprite. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of an experiment. I wanted to just for fun, and then it turned into like honestly, it was been working fine. Like my vector class, like I haven't had a problem with it, and I, I kind of enjoyed writing it. But yeah, it, it, it probably is a mistake for, um, I mean, usability and stuff and debugging. Like the the vector classes, uh, you know, made by actual programmers is probably um, better to use than my own. But it was fun. I might, I might replace them with uh, proper ones later, but uh, yeah. Okay, sprites are loading. I'm gonna assume that the sprite data is also there. I haven't checked, but I'm just gonna pretend that it is. Uh, I'm gonna start adding some components and objects. Um, so cause, yeah, when we run now, we have like, yeah, hello world, and we have our atlas clearly packed because all the textures are there. Um, I assume if I make a new a sprite file um, with other stuff in it, I'll make a circle face instead of a... Just to double check that it's loading all the files with a single frame. Yeah, it's there, it's working. It has this kind of weird extra stuff because I'm actually adding padding to my atlas, which I don't think I need for this game, but I'm doing it anyways. They already have spacing, so they probably don't need padding, but if the texture was looped, it would be useful. Um, I'm gonna turn padding off, actually. Where does that happen? What happens here? Okay, cool. So our atlas is clearly being packed from all the sprites. Yeah. Oh, hey, Chevy. Um. 
Um, yeah. Okay. So that's all working. So next I'm going to add some components. I'm going to add a sprite component first because that seems the most interesting. Um, I'm going to delete a bunch of the frames in this one. I'll just make it loop between these two different ones. Like that. So yeah, next I'll add a sprite component. Uh, or a sprite player, I guess. Or I'll call it animator. Um, sprite player is another type. sprite that we're currently using, which I think I'm going to make private, actually. Um, and then we'll have an animation pointer. Function to this, so this actually needs to extend component, which is in world. Okay, so this animator component is going to play sprite, so it extends component, and then um, So the animator takes a constructor, it can either, this one actually doesn't do anything, and then this one takes a string to a sprite, and then we'll find the sprite in our own constructor. And then update's gonna like, you know, increment the frames, and then render will draw itself. And then we're gonna add another function called play. Um, and it's gonna play an animation. And then that seems like good enough for me for now. So I'll implement these if C++, or if C++, which I did. Um, okay, so in this scenario, we're gonna say our M sprite is equal to um, content, which I don't have a reference to yet. Content and sprite. Uh, oh, and this is supposed to be const. Because it doesn't actually touch those or change them at all. Uh, so we get our sprite, and then, I mean, assuming our sprite is valid, so if sprite actually exists, um, we'll set our animation just be the first, uh, first sprite, or first animation in the sprite. I might just change animation to an index. It doesn't really need to be a pointer. Because like, it seems easier than keep storing a pointer to it all the time. Um, yeah. Okay, so then play, we'll look to see if that animation actually exists. So, and if we have a sprite, so if sprite, Um, oops. 
pretty good so far. Um, working on animators right now. And then hopefully getting sprites rendering. Um, okay, so saying play this animation. So now we have to actually find animation. So that way we're finding the animation that we want to play next. Okay, so now in update loop, if we have a sprite assigned uh, and our animation index and our animation index uh, is smaller than animation size, then we're going to update our sprite. So now I need a frame counter. Um, so I'm going to add two things. One is going to be a M frame index. Zero, and then another one's gonna be a float called M frame counter. Uh, zero. So what we're gonna do in the update loop now is we're going to increment um, frame counter by delta time, and then if our frame counter is larger than the duration of our current frame, uh, we're going to increment frames and reduce the frame counter. So. Yeah, I'll explain it more after I get there, but um, I'm going to make a reference to our animation first. So I'll get our animation, and then I'll increment the counter, and then if the counter is larger, larger equal to animation, uh, I guess I'll grab a frame as well. Um, I need a float number. I'll, I'll explain in a second why I need a float number. Um, was that a tutorial reference? Uh, I think I've just been coding for a long time. I think I've been coding like I'm 28 as of yesterday. Uh, and I've been coding since I was like 12 or 13. So it's been like 15, 16 years of just like doing this every day. So I, I'm getting pretty used to it. That's probably partially why I still look up stuff all the time. Like. I'm coding stuff that I'm pretty familiar with right now, but like whenever I code new stuff, I'm, I'm looking up resources. Like I usually have like 10 Google pages open and stuff. So um, it's pretty normal for me. Um, the reason I need a float is because the frame index is like an integer value of like what frame you're on, but I need a floating value to move through time because time I'm storing time in seconds, which is a float value. So basically like as you're on frame one, the frame duration will be increasing in float values. And then when the frame duration is longer than the frame, then it steps to the next one and re resets the frame counter. So um, so once my frame counter, which is a float, is larger than the frame duration, I'm going to reduce frame counter by frame duration. And I'm going to say um, frame index is going to increment. Uh, and then if m frame index is larger or equal to uh, the animation frames, uh, then we're going to uh, jump back to the beginning. So M frame index is going to equal to zero. Um, yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're uh, incrementing the counter, uh, moving to the next frame if our frame counter is now longer than the duration. So say the frame duration is 0.1 second. Uh, once the frame counter gets to 0 0.1 seconds, we're going to step to the next frame. So move to the next frame um, after duration. And then we reduce the frame counter by the duration. You could just set the frame counter to zero, um, but that'll have some floating point precision errors where like it'll slowly get off. Um, but if you reduce it by the frame duration, that way if it, like, the frame counter gets to like 1.1 1 .1 and the duration is one, then you don't lose 0.1, it keeps the 0.1. Um, this should actually be a well loop if you want to be like proper, but I mean, whatever. Um. 
Yeah, 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 need to put it in a while loop. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully re-upload this stream later, yeah. Hopefully I can put it on YouTube and stuff. Hopefully, Twitch should be storing it. Am I a hog lover? Um, I don't know. Depends on the day maybe. You download Twitch files. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I will probably re-upload the Twitch files to YouTube. Um, okay, that should be our update loop, I think. Um, I guess there's a chance here where the frame could be out of bounds before we even get here, which is problematic. Um, so I guess right here I might say like, um, if um, frame index, uh, this will only happen if, I guess here I need to say frame index is equal to zero. And frame index is equal to zero, so it resets when you play a new animation. Um, Yeah, and then here it should only be wrong. What? Thank you, Google, for opening or Visual Studio. Um, that should only. Uh, frame index is less than zero, and frame index is smaller than this gigantic thing. So, so this shouldn't ever be able to happen now, but if for some reason stuff gets wonky, it just will stop updating, which seems fine until you like tell it to play any sprite or whatever, but it shouldn't get wonky at this point, because I don't see there's any way to. Um, <laughs> famous last words. Uh, okay, so now in our render function, we're going to draw our sprite and we're gonna use our entity as our offset. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say batch.push uh, matrix. Um, two, three, transform. We're gonna use our entity position. So um, yeah, this is the part that I've coded a little bit already was I already had these entity Entity component system set up, but it's in the GitHub and I kind of explained it at the start of the stream how it works. So I'm not going to explain it again right now, but basically it's just like, there's entities and components, components get attached to entities uh, and that's it. Um, it's very simple. Entities also just have positions because it makes more sense. Um, so we're going to offset our matrix by the entities, our, our parents entities position. And we're going to set our origin to our sprite origin. This is only if we have a sprite rendering also. I should just have a bool for um, so I'm gonna have to write this again for the render code because if it's like out of bounds or something then I only want to render for all sort of valid states. I don't want to render frames that don't exist. Um, okay, then we need to take our M sprite, which has an origin that I made. And then scale is going to be 1 for now, and rotation is going to be 0. And we'll pop matrix after. And then we're going to find our current frame. I'm going to copy this code. And then we're gonna say, hey, frame, uh, we're gonna say batch.render our frame. So our frame has that image I assigned to it, and we're gonna draw it at zero, because I already offset it with the matrix. Okay. Can I mention some examples of components? Um, so far, there are the only component I have set up so far is animator. Animator is a single component. Um, and it has this. So if I look at the actual component interface, a component has an active uh, toggle, a visible toggle, a depth toggle, which is for like ordering when it gets drawn. Uh, and then it has a type, which is like every unique type of component will be assigned an ID so I can keep track of them without like any kind of reflection information. So 
uh, the animator in this case will probably get assigned type zero or whatever. It's just automatic. Um, and then entities, their parent entity world is the world they're in. Um, and then previous and next component, uh, because components are in linked lists of their type. So every animator is in a big linked list of animators. Um, and then finally, I have some utility functions like get a component of a specific type from its parent entity and then destroy the component. And then otherwise they just have like uh, awake, update and render and destroyed callbacks that happen. Uh, awake actually won't even be called right now because I didn't hook it up. So I'll talk it up after. Um, and that's basically it for components. So there's currently no components. Um, every entity just has a position. I just also give them visible, active uh, and position uh, value. Um, because yeah, I felt like every entity was gonna have positions and I didn't want positions to component because then you have this whole thing of like every single time you want a position to like check if your parent has a position. It's like, yeah, no, it's like every entity has a position. It's simpler for now. Um, I'm not using proper ECS now. Gravity could totally be a, uh, uh, well, gravity could be a system, um, but I don't have systems. Um, so gravity could be a component in this scenario. I'm doing more of a uh, unity approach where there's like, basically components are mono behaviors. They control, they contain both state and, uh, and uh, behavior. So there's no, there's no system at the moment. And I, for a game this small, I don't really see a reason to, if the game got bigger and you work with multiple people and you know, then, you know, systems really come into play and are useful. But for the scale of this game, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's gonna be more overhead than it's worth. Okay, so now quickly, I have a world in my game. Uh, and what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to add a entity to test with a sprite. So I'm gonna get rid of our string and our atlas drawing here. Um, and then in our startup, I'll create a new entity in our world, so say world uh, add entity. And then to our entity, I'll add a new animator component. I need to grab that from components animator. So say, hey, entity uh, add a new animator, um, which needs to take a sprite. So I feel like to this entity animator. And, Play. And then I'll say a play. Um, oops. And I'll say and play idle is what I call the animation here. So it should, and these right now, uh, if I go to frame properties, they're each 100 milliseconds long. So it should play at this speed. Um, let's make this one. Let's make them. Okay, so I need to actually update the entities. Um, so I'll say world update, and then right here I'll say world render uh, buffer. And yeah, these are the two things I didn't. Oops, uh, I didn't totally explain on stream. But like the update function is very simple. It just loops through all our components uh, and their linked lists. So it loops through linked lists and calls their update functions. And then render does the same thing, but render actually sorts them by their depth. And it does this kind of ugly thing where every single render, it like adds all the components to a vector, sorts them all by depth and then renders them. So like ideally this would all be cached and like only updated as like objects change their depth value and stuff like that. But like, I don't, for the simplicity of this, of this project, I'm just like, no, just like every single frame, add all the components, uh, sort them and then draw them. Because even if we had a thousand components, every frame, it's still gonna be fast. So um, for the scope of this project, I don't care that this is like, yeah, definitely not optimized. Um, yeah. Yeah, without the system part, it's just like, it's yeah, closer, if you've used Unity, it's closer to the mono behaviors of Unity. So every component just has uh, state and behavior in it at the same time. And then entity is like the, the game object. Oh yeah, that, that, that talk is really good also. The one that Alpine's talking about. It's really cool. Um, okay, let me play, I think. Oh, I'll say, I'll go to the entity position. Actually, I wanna add an override to this 
add entity so I can give it a position just from the add entity call because um, I feel like I'm going to do that a lot. Um, and I think for the scope of this game too, I actually don't want entity positions to be vectors. I want them to be points. And I'm gonna have to I think I have to have the namespace here, so I have to have the because yeah, I think I want entities to actually be points because that'll simplify a lot of the stuff I do. Um, okay, so if I run, oh wait, I want to give it a position. So say point like 100, 100. Okay, that should put an entity. Let's see if it draws or what happens. Nope, we have compile errors. Oh, I didn't implement find sprite in my content. I thought I did, oh, I thought I did that. Do you have that? Reference the function. Interesting. Um, what is happening? Con sprite, content, find sprite. Why would this suddenly, why would this not be allowed? Is it in my scene? This isn't linked. Um, find sprite, const char name, turn off my bears. Definitely seems like it's there. Reference to function name, so. And I'm including it. Oh, I'm maybe not including sprite? What am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, I'm also like not using almost any dependencies or any libraries. Um, I think the only standard library thing I'm implementing or using right now is memory for like shared pointers and function for functional stuff. Um, and then everything else, like I don't think I have any other dependencies. Everything's compiled, like I don't have Except like my blah stuff, but that stuff is also all self-contained. So it's pretty limited in terms of what I have. And I cannot figure out why is all this more simple? What I'm doing here. I forward declare that so am I not am not included here? Con sprite content. How come the Atlas function stuff working? Find sprite. I have it here. Hmm. Yeah, I love seeming problems like exactly like this. This is probably something with my seeming that's messed up. Const right star. Hmm. Like this, it's implemented here, like the, all the other functions, and I call the other ones elsewhere. This is all making sense. So somehow animator.cpp is not getting find sprite, but game is. How are they even linked differently? I don't know what's up. Do I need to add? I don't 
think I need to add each file, sorry. Like, what? I don't know what's going on here. Maybe I should do a clean fill and see. That, this crash makes sense now because it's like, it's not gonna, the sprite, animator's not gonna find a sprite and then tries to play a sprite and it crashes. Like that makes, that makes sense to me. Um, but I don't understand why game can call that, but animator can't? What am I doing? Reference and yeah, public static struct. This is a weird one. Warning. Person who struck nesting class. Oh, that's a problem. Um, oh, that's actually that's part of the problem. Maybe? I mean, I'm gonna hope that's the problem. That's the problem, okay. Cool. quick break and get some water again and then because talking takes a lot of water and then uh I'll hopefully get the player stuff happening soon here because yeah <laughs> but yeah i'll be back in like two minutes again and then yeah we'll hopefully get animators working and then player and some collision i'm hoping to get that in today and then tomorrow i just work on like making a little game out of it but yeah we'll see how it goes okay so next up is Uh, I'm hoping the stream, the stream should be like another two and a half hours probably. It's currently 3 p.m. I'm gonna go to like, I have some stuff I need to do this evening, but I'm gonna play or work until like probably close to 6 p.m. my time. And then tomorrow I'm gonna be working on this all day. So I'm gonna be working from earlier in the morning. Today it starts like 1 p.m. But tomorrow I'm gonna start probably like 9.30 a.m. or 10 a.m. and go until like six or seven. Um, okay, so find Sprite. It did not find the sprite. I don't think. Because otherwise the pointer would be in all. Yeah, so we get to here and Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm not finding the sprite. Just see the player, so we step in. First one's name is play or it dot name is circle. Oh, it has the dot ASC at the end. Okay. So I actually want to do. Um, I want to cut the last four characters of the name off the end, which is going to be like it dot end. Is that gonna cut off more than I want? Oops. Okay. It is, nope, that's correct. Okay, so now I should actually get it. Yeah, and we have a sprite. Okay, cool. So there it is, and it's running. Uh, I'm gonna make the background not hot red because that's hurting my eyes. Um, let's make it like, uh, Red, green, blue. Don't want this break point anymore. That's still a little bit intense. Okay. That's better. Um, and yeah, so there's our player. Any ideas how to make C++ better? Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward, I really wanna try Zig and I wanna try Rust at some point because I think, I'm not sure how to make C++ better, but I think that you could probably like, cause it has a lot of baggage, right? But I think you could take a lot of learning from C++ and make a really cool language with it. Um, such as, I mean, what Rust is doing, things like Zig and stuff. 
Um, but yeah, like, yeah, there's a lot of things I don't love about C++ and I think it's just, uh, most of it is just kind of baggage. It's like, it's, you know, built up off this groundwork that um, I feel has problems and it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to address that as an entire language. I think they will, like it's like, C++ 20 is better and I think every version is slowly getting better. Um, but it's tough to address some of the stuff. Like I, like things like copy constructors and move construct, like all that stuff is like so bad. Um, and I get why it's like that. Like it has to be like that given the context of the language, like where the language is, you have to write those if you want to use, you know, um, proper C++. But I think that stuff like having to write copy constructors and move constructors for like every single one of your classes that have any kind of data management is like so annoying. I don't know. And then you have to like write two of them for every like move and copy construct, like move constructor and move assignment operator, like all that kind of stuff is just like, that's like, that's, that's bad. I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure like what, if the language is built around needing those, like you can't just get rid of them because it breaks everything. So like the, the way the language is structured like requires them, which is kind of why C is really cool because C is just like a lot simpler. It doesn't have all this like hidden stuff. Um, but then, I mean, I don't like have, like I do like being able to just like copy values and like uh, have destructors clean stuff up. Like I do like that in principle, but um, yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> um, okay, so the player object works. Um, so next up, I think is a collider component. I think that makes sense because our sprite one works. Um, I want to make a better sprite, but I'll probably leave that to later to get the foundation here running. Um, so I'm going to make a new collider by each. Um, I do not want to break point at the start of this file. I don't know why I did that. really raining outside. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it through my headphones even. It's raining very hard. Um, colliders, I'm gonna make them basically just rectangles or optionally grids, I think. So they need to be able to do both. Um, is just going to be a, do I need to make a struct for it?
Do I want to actually start this grid in the collider, or do you knew it? I, probably, I guess it's, I mean, it's going to be a pointer either way, so it's going to be a bool pointer. idea of the grid collider please okay yeah sorry i didn't explain that so rectangle is what you expect it's a rectangle collider a grid collider i'm going to use for the terrain so i'm going to have tile sets and then the grid collider is just going to be like a 2d grid and then every cell it's going to have a certain call like a each cell will be a certain width and height so it's going to be a grid like this and then um every cell can either be filled or not filled and then it'll just count as a collision or not um so uh yeah, like if I, you know, it'll be like a grid like this. And then, you know, certain cells can either be filled or not. Uh, and then if a cell is filled, it'll count as collision. So then I can check rectangles against the grid. Um, and it's just like, I could make every single collider in this game just a rectangle and just be like, yeah, every single tile is its own rectangle collider and there's just a million of them. But it's a lot of overhead collision checks become much more expensive like i want to check with the ground and all of a sudden i have to check like 500 colliders just to see if i'm hitting the ground so a good collider in like a 2d platformer is like a generally speaking a good idea because it just simplifies instead of doing a thousand collision checks to see if i'm colliding the ground i do one um obviously there's ways around this if you start implementing like a quad tree or some kind of spatial map for your collider so you don't have to collide against or check against as many when you want to do a collision check but for this project i'm not going to add anything like that because it's overcomplicated and like uh, I think removes some of the simplicity of um, of this setup. So instead, I'm gonna always be checking against every single collider. But since I'm doing that, I'd like to have two collider types. One is just a, a rectangle, and one is a grid. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this more, and I honestly kind of think that instead of having colliders like this, I should just have a, a rect collider and a grid collider and just make them two different types of components. Um, yeah, but then I have to like, I have to check both of them. Like if I have a, a door, which is also solid, I have to check, yeah, so this is this way. Um, okay. So, pass on the type and start. And then I kind of think that I want to do it differently than this because I want it to be either have yeah, fighter, oops, um, make rect or static. This way, just to make it very explicit. Collider type returns its type. Um, maybe I'll call this shape. I think I like that more. Okay. So now, if it is a rectangle, you'd be able to update the rectangle size. So. Um, And get the rectangle, I guess. And 
And then if it's a grid, you want to be able to set the grid um, to either on or off. So I think we'll just do an index operator. Actually, no, I'll just say, um, chat a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. So this is my kind of dumb rectangle class. Now I'm going to want to add overlap checks so they can check against other objects, but for now this is fine. Um, and yeah, this is a case where I'm going to want copy constructors and stuff because it's going to create uh, this, this thing, which is a pointer. So yeah, this is where it gets ugly with like stupid. I think I don't want copy, I want only move operators. Um, so collider. So now I'm just writing some move operators because they do get moved at the start. It's kind of impossible for them not to do right now. Um, so this one's not pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna implement all this stuff. Visual Studio didn't like it. All right, so these ones. Nope, okay. Just not gonna do it. Did I do any of them? Oh, I did a bunch of them, okay. So here we're gonna say that um, Copied. We just want to steal the grid uh, if we're equal to that. I think I just like do a pure copy. No, I need to set the values. Okay. Which, yeah, I don't. This is the part of C++ I do not. Oh. I guess I could make this a shared pointer or whatever, but. I don't know, like it's also ugly. Maybe it's not that ugly. Or a unique pointer. Maybe I'll just make this a unique pointer, but then can it be copied? Will the copy work? I think only move works, right? Sure. Or unique pointers will delete the I mean I already deleted the copy, so it's probably fine. I'll just I'll just wait it, whatever. This one. Okay. So that's the stuff done. So I had to write all this code just to deal with the fact that I have a pointer. So maybe I should just make that a, maybe that says I should make it a unique pointer and it'll simplify. Like I want to write any of this code. So an argument for that. Uh, 
Uh, the Celeste level editor um, that we wrote uses Electron, so it's actually an HTML5. All right, but I deleted the copy, so now this is not gonna work, so. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, this is all just for this pointer. I don't care at this pointer. Yeah, maybe I should maybe I'll just make a new pointer and like save myself all this trouble. Or share pointer. Although I don't remember how share pointers work with um, arrays. C17 actually used to do this apparently. Cool. So then I can get rid of all this stupid stuff. So maybe that's the right call. Oops. Made my collider. Do you call it destructor or constructor? Oh, because the union. I assume. Okay, I'll just get rid of the union. Anyways. Sorry, this is some this is some code. <laughs> I'm making this probably overly complicated, but or grid collider is almost done or collider in general is almost done I should say um,
Um, okay, so I'm storing the cells in a um, single array. So I have to find the value, uh, or a, a one-dimensional array, I should say. So to get it into a two-dimensional position, I have to take the x position and then add the y position times the columns. So it finds the proper cell. Uh, and then finally, to set the cell, we're gonna copy this and paste the same thing. And we're saying cells uh, is equal to value. Okay. Visual Studio complains that like I'm multiplying like integers together and it's gonna potentially be out of range, but like I I don't care about that at all. Like okay, like it could if I make it like a billion 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 times a billion billion billion, it could be out of range, but like it's never gonna happen because I, I even check if they're within range first, so it's all good. Um, I can understand a rect for a collider, but what's the grid? Um, is a one or two D array easier? I don't know. I, I find one D or one D array is easier just because, like, I don't even know the syntax for. I guess it would just be like this in, in C plus um, plus. I assume. But yeah, I, I just like doing one D arrays. I just find them simpler to manage. Um, even though you end up doing this multiplication, but like it's a simple multiplication. I assume the compiler even like simplifies that more. But yeah. Um, I think it should, maybe it doesn't. Anyways, um, the grid collider is because I kind of explained this a little bit earlier, but basically I want two types of colliders, and instead of having two different kind of component types, I'm just making them a singular component type, and then a collider can either be a rectangle or it can be a grid. And I'm going to use grid for the terrain um, because a grid, ter like a collider, a grid collider for the terrain is going to be a lot faster um, and simpler than like I don't want to make a new rectangle collider for every single tile in the game. I just want one rectangle or one grid collider for all the terrain and it'll simplify it a bunch. Um, okay, so that should be the collider. I'm gonna make a render function for the collider but default it to not happen. So actually, um, I wanna actually move this. And then I actually do want to override. Render. Cool, thanks for hanging out. Have a good evening or day or whatever. Um, so I just want to be able to draw a debug view of this, so um, if shape is equal to shape rect. Rectangle, which is just right and rect, and we'll make the thickest one in color. And we can get Yeah, the size of 2D arrays should be identical to the size of a 1D array, um, but yeah, it, it'll it order them differently, so yeah. Uh, okay, so... Oh, I haven't put anywhere what the size of the rect or the grid is. I should probably... I'll just store this in here too, I think. say there's always a uniform tile size, they can't be different widths and heights.
Hello. How's it going? Okay, I think the colliders are done. I want to add a toggle to the game to draw the colliders if I set a certain value. Uh, okay, so now if I hit a certain button, Uh, I'll just do F1 to toggle that, I guess. That seems useful. Okay, and then I'm going to actually draw the colliders here explicitly. So if and draw colliders. I'm just adding a toggle to basically draw colliders if I press a button so that I can kind of see what's going on, um, which is really useful, I find, because um, I don't have another way to like see what's happening. Um, so we're going to iterate through all the colliders, so for uh, This is kind of annoying, but that's not casted automatically, but that's how it is. Um, so yeah, because my colliders are a linked list, so I can just like get the first one in the world and then just loop through all of them. Um, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. So let's say collider. Okay, so now if I add a collider to our test entity, make rectangle, um, say negative eight by negative eight by eight by eight, or negative four, so it's centered. Uh, should be should be there. Okay, I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, whoa. Thank you, Provod, Provod, for the raid. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Um, why don't I do the templated version of the next, same as first? Um, the main reason is I don't actually know, like, I don't know, like, my, I'm in inheriting from um, component, so I'd have to, like, which just has this. It doesn't know the type here, so I like I'm over like it's getting it's calling this function actually. So I could make component itself a templated class, um, but then I need to make a base class to be able to reference this at all anywhere because I can't reference component unless it has like a non-templated version for like for example when I'm iterating over the world and stuff. So then I have to make like a class like base component or something um, that has all the functions except for the templated ones, which would be these ones. So it's like it feels like it's kind of annoying really fast. If there's a better way to do that, I'm all, I'm happy to have suggestions there. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't think of it immediately. Type could be inferred. Oh, can you do like, how do you, how can type be inferred? Can you do like auto? You can't, can you?
Um, okay, I guess I'll just see quickly if this... I think this should... My player should just crash. Oh, yeah, see, this is... Actually, what we were talking about. This here. Okay, so F1. Okay, there's my collider. So my object has a collider. Um, so now I need to be able to collide with other things and I need to be able to move. So I'm gonna add two, or one more component type called mover, uh, which is gonna keep info about how we move. And then colliders I need to add overloads for actually colliding with other colliders. Um, so, I think I'll add the collision functions first. So I'll say bool um, check uh, with the point offset. And then I'll add a few other ones to uh, point check is fine. Oh, I want a mask actually for these. Um, so these need a mask. So then we can collide with this and mask, which we're going to close one. Um, okay, this makes sense. I just need a simple check function for now. So I don't need anything complicated. And I guess I want to check it explicitly another collider. So these are gonna be some really simple, just A, A, B, B collision checks with other colliders. So I'm using a bit field or bit, yeah, bit mask um, to check. So what I'm going to later do is I'm going to have flags or masks for like for solids, for players, for enemies, various other things, um, and then you can assign them uh, to the mask. So for example, solids will probably take up index or bit zero in the mask, and then enemies will take a bit one, uh, whatever will take up, you know, a player will take a bit two. Uh, jumpy platforms like a bit three, and then at any time I can check for any kind of mask uh, and see if I'm colliding against them. So this is some bit operator check-in stuff where I'm like oring or sorry ending two masks together, and then if they uh, if it exists or if it does not exist in the mask, then it continues. Um, which yeah should be fine. So then um, we're gonna say if Check against uh, other offset and other is equal to uh, next, and then we have to cast this again. Yeah, I still don't quite understand how I can infer it automatically, but if there's a way to do that, that'd be cool. Oh, I guess the the next could have a type, but that's almost the same as casting it. Like, unless it is typed, and then yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so then this, this collision check needs to see, it needs to do two different types of collisions, or no, three or four different types. Um, so if our shape is equal to, whoops, I zoomed the screen out. So if our shape is equal to other M, uh, our shape is equal to shape rectangle and, uh, well, then we'll do stuff. 
else if our shape is equal to shape grid. And then otherwise we just return false because something's messed up. Um, and then so then if the other one's m is equal to a rectangle, then we do a simple rectangle rectangle check. Otherwise, then we do a rectangle to grid check. And now this is the same thing, but just kind of going to be reversed. So I might put these into functions, but I'll code these ones first. Yeah, I'll probably put these into a function. Um, but okay, so checking two rectangles against each other is super simple. Um, that one's just like two A, A, B, B overlap checks, like super dead simple. Um, so we're gonna say like, uh, if, actually I think I already have code for this. So I can just say like, um, return, I need to offset our entity position because our entity position matters and I need to offset the offset. So rect i um, a is going to be equal our entity position plus our offset. And then uh, rect b is going to equal the other entity's position plus uh, nothing. What is an element for this? Um, Oh, right, rectangle. Um, so it's gonna be our rect plus that, and then others and rect plus that. Yeah, and then we're gonna return a dot overlaps. Okay, so we create a rectangle uh, at from our current actual collider rectangle and we offset it by these values. Uh, and then we use the other rectangle and then offset it by its entity um, so that we get them in world space. Um, okay, so for the grid, it's gonna be really similar. So we have to iterate over a grid and check each grid cell. Um, but I'm gonna ignore that for now and come back to it. Um, instead, what I'm gonna do is add private functions for checking against grid, um, which is gonna be cool. Uh, a rectangle checking rect rect slider a uh, slider b. These can be static, probably. And uh, offset, and then rect to grid. Okay. Oops. That way I have to write these functions, or write this a couple times in here. Um, so this one, it assumes that it's rectangles because we got to this point. Uh, so. So now here, we can just do that. And then in this scenario where we're a grid, if the other one is a rectangle, it actually needs to be, I guess this one could just have been in line. But whatever, so then this one's gonna return back to grid. This guy will get offset. And then in this scenario, uh, it's gonna return also a grid. Uh, but in this case, it's flipping them because the other one is the rectangle. And then we are the grid. And then it's actually negative offset. I think that's right. I can't totally remember. Hmm. Yeah, actually, decal type might work. Something like that might might be possible. I think we're not going to support grid to grid rectangle. 
overlap or grid to grid collider overlap. So I'll come back to writing this grid to a rectangle to grid overlap check in a bit, but it's it's the, the concept is pretty simple, but yeah, I'll come back to that. Um, so yeah, that's my collision check done. So now I could do a really simple thing. Um, if I go to our game, if I add another entity, thing where I update um, my first collider so I'll just say um, world get uh, first entity and then if entity get collider uh, check uh, zero So if we don't collide with anything, just move this entity down. This is like you know, one or more instance. Oh, because this is a... I didn't think about that, that these overloads are both going to be happy. So this object should just move down until it hits the other object now. Because like this is like super hacky code, but it's just a or it'll do nothing. Huh. This should just be moving down, I think. We get our first entity and then we say if the entity let me just try moving it down regardless of what it thinks it's doing. Okay. So it thinks it's always colliding right now. Is what this is telling me? So, oh, it's colliding with itself. Okay, yeah. Um, if this or other is equal to this. Oh boy. Is that an infinite loop? Oh, because my continues need to do this bit of code. Okay. Okay, so if I need to change this. So if, I'll just do a big if statement. So if other is not equal to this, and our masks match, and we overlap at our offset, then we return true. This can go. And then I'm just going to make this if statement uh, like that. Yeah, it worked. OK, so our collision. Rectangle, 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 rectangle collision uh, is now working. So we can check if two rectangles overlap and they can have flags. So now in theory, I could say like, oh, the solid flag or the solid mask is um, is like some value like mask is equal to like, you know, um, up here I do something like um, honest. Uh, un32 t solid is equal to one shifted zero uh, and then we can say this mask is solid and then we can say only overlap with solid stuff and this should still work 
in theory, unless I fuck something up. Yeah, so it still works. But then if this mask was something else, like if we made the mask um, for this thing, I don't know, not solid, uh, so it's something different, then it'll just pass through it. So that's what we want. Um, sorry, catching up from chat. What kind of game is it? Um, I'm gonna make like a, sorry, that might have been really old. I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna make like a really simple uh, Zelda 2 inspired game. Um, but yeah, I'm only working on it today and tomorrow. I'm just gonna do like a really quick small game and I'll see how far I get. I'm not sure how much I'll get done because it's already been two and a half hours and I only just now have like sort of a player like falling. So we'll see how far I get. But I really wanted to start kind of from scratch. So um, yeah. Um, any tips on how to advertise my website chat? Hmm. I don't have a good answer for that one. Yeah, yeah, I agree that it shouldn't need to cast it. I think it, it seems possible to make it not cast it. But yeah, I'll come back to that. Cause I, I would like, to, I, I agree, I would like to sort that out, but I think um, for the sake of moving forward, I'll skip it for now. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that more later. <laughs> yeah, tiny link. Um, but yeah, we'll see how far I actually get on it. Um, SDL is not already built, so you have to also include SDL yourself. So for example, when I set up this project in my CMake, um, CMake asks for uh, certain stuff. So Visual Studio does their own CMake thing that's here, but like if you use CMake normally, you'd assign these values. So like I assign it where the SDL2 DLL is, I assign it where the SDL2 includers directories are, and I assigned it where the SDL2 libraries are. So I just like actually set them myself, um, which is in like, you know, my local computer path. So I don't have SDL2 in the actual repo. Um, so you need to add that yourself if you clone it and reference it yourself. Um, I really wish Visual Studio, I guess the Visual Studio CMake stuff is really new, so I can't blame it too much, but I wish I just would add them like that. What song is playing? Um, I'm playing from this Harris Heller um, stream safe music. I don't know what the actual song, I guess it's called this. It's pretty good, I like it. Um, okay. I'm trying to think what I need to do next. Next I need to actually work on game stuff, I think, or a player anyways, a player controller, um, and probably start working on like tiles loading and stuff. Um, so I'll probably add a player component. So that I can actually control it and do stuff. system in the ECS actually do? Um, why are you decided to skip that part? Okay, so in a traditional ECS, um, the system is the thing that has the actual behavior. So uh, I'll just write some example code. I don't know what this is. So um, in, a, in a proper ECS, you have you know entities, components, and systems. Entities are generally speaking in this, in this scenario just an ID. They only have an ID and what components are associated with them and nothing else. Um, so oftentimes they're just like a slot in an array with the components are attached to them. Super simple. Um, and then components are just pure data. So a component would almost always just be a struct 
and I might have something called like sprite and then it would have like it would have information for like what you know animation is playing um, or like the sprite asset and then what animation is playing and then like um, you know what frame it's on uh, if it's scaled or something very simple stuff like that um, and then finally you have a system and in this case you might make it called like a render system and the render system would be something um, I'm gonna write pseudocode as an actual C code um, or C++ code. Uh, the render system would do something like um, for like for each uh, sprite in the game, uh, do this code and like you know be like draw sprite with both sprite data. Um, and you make it a sprite reference here, so then you can say like oh like you know do the sprite or the sprite uh, frame or whatever. You do stuff like that. Um, the cool thing about systems though is that you can build systems um, that require multiple components at once. So the render system might not just require a sprite, it might also require a transform component. So then you have a transform component with like, you know, a X and a Y or whatever, and probably other rotations and stuff, and this wouldn't have the scale anymore. Uh, and then what you do is you say, okay, the, the render system actually requires a transform and a sprite, and then you get both of those. So you say for each entity that has both a transform and a sprite, you do this stuff, and then you could, you know, you say like, um, draw spray at the transform dot position or x and transform dot y or whatever. Um, and generally, this means that like you kind of know where the behavior for everything always is, um, especially in things where there can be like uh, a lot of the time behavior will like happen between two different components. So there's like a trigger component and a triggerable component, and the triggerable, you know, gets there gets triggered once the trigger interacts with it or something. That was a, that sentence was interesting. Um, so like the, the code for like when an event is triggered could either be in the invoker or the invokee. You don't really, like it, it could go kind of either way. It's like, does the, does the invoker like listen for it or does the, you know, the trigger like wait for it? This is like a terrible ex explanation, but basically like a lot of time code can exist in either place and you don't really know where. So the thing the system does is like, oh no, there's a system that like iterates over both the thing that can be invoked and the thing that does the invoking and it does the behavior in there. Um, so the system is kind of the thing that like where all the behavior actually happens. Um, which is like a really cool direction, really cool idea. Um, in this case, I'm not doing that. I just say components have behavior uh, and there's no system. So all the behavior that would normally be in a system are just in components. So if I want to do something where the behavior could go in either or component, like it could be in the, um, it could be in like the, like if I have a thing that could get hurt and a thing that does damage, the thing that applies damage could either go in the damager or the hurtable. Uh, and I, in this scenario, I just have to pick like, oh, the hurt component is the one that actually takes damage and the damager just tells it or something. Like there's, yeah. There's not a cl as clear a place for it to exist, but the, the other thing is I don't have to create a system every like I don't have to write a player system, or like uh, I add a new enemy and I have to add like you know new enemy behavior system stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's a trade off. Um, hopefully that explained it. Exactly. Yeah, I've just merged components and systems into one thing because. It's simpler for me, given the state of this project. How do you find components? There's a for loop and checking their type. Uh, the components are actually put into buckets. So the world file or the world class uh, assigns components a type. There's like a static type. So there's actually this class uh, and every single time a component, the first time a component is added to a, a world, it like increments this component ID and assigns each component type a unique ID. So like animators get an ID, colliders get an ID, the player component is added is going to get a unique ID. Uh, and then they just put into buckets based on their ID. So actually down here I have uh, linked lists of components based on their type. So the animators are all on one linked list, the colliders are all on one linked list, and the players are all on one linked list. So uh, then when I want to request a uh, component of a specific type, I just say like, I'll get the first component of X. Um, yeah. And then actually comp components also store their ID. So if I want to get a component from an entity, because entities actually store all their components in a linear list of just uh, component pointers. 
So if an enemy wants to get, a, if you want to get a specific component out of an enemy, sorry, out of an enemy, I can't speak, uh, then in that case it does iterate through all the components and compare their IDs until it finds one with a matching ID. Um, so if I go here in this get function, which it doesn't want to go to, but it's down here. Um, if I say like, sorry, I'm trying to find the code. Yeah, the entity get loops through all the components, compares the type of the component to the static ID of that type, and then uh, returns it if it matches. Um, okay, let's see if I can get a player. I'd like to get a player controller in before uh, the end of today, so that tomorrow I can just work on gameplay stuff. Um, I think I have like two hours-ish left today. So we'll see how far I can get. Uh, I'll leave that there actually for now. Um, and I actually want Clyde to be on by default because I find that useful. Um, okay, player component. Uh, so players can update. Player's not going to render. This should be called like player controller, not just player, because player is more than just the, this, but this is, I'm gonna just call it player. It really only needs an update for now, I think. Um, oh, and I wanted a mover component. Oops. speech to be public. Or should it? Yeah, it should. It's weird if not. like this. I'll just hard code it into the update loop for now. Actually, we will want... Okay, I think this is enough to get started here. Um, so objects are always going to be at integer positions, and then I'm going to store a remainder for how much extra they have to move. I want things to stay at integer position because it makes collision easier, especially AABV collision where I'm using integers for all the colliders. So I always want objects to be at integer positions, uh, but I want the movement to be able to be floating. So I'm going to store a remainder for how much extra it still has to move. Am I using any third-party libraries? Uh, I'm using my own library, um, which, one second. Uh, I'm using my own library called blah, which is on GitHub there. Um, it has a few third party libraries. Uh, these are the ones it has. It uses STV image, STV image right, and STV true type. True type is for loading fonts, image is for like PNGs, and STV image right is for writing PNGs. Uh, these are the only dependencies it has, um, these three files. Well, S oh, actually, SDL2. <laughs> I forgot what like the main the main one is like SDL2. It's using SDL2 um, for uh, windowing and like input stuff.
and then I guess you could count um, uh, OpenGL or DirectX as dependencies. I'm not using any libraries for OpenGL on DirectX, so they're just, um, I just hand wrote them both, so, uh, but it does use those. Yeah, it is STLT. <laughs> I forgot what like, the, the main one. Um, Okay, so move X is gonna be really simple. Where do just... So if we have a collider, we actually do collision checks. If we don't have a collider, then we just move. Um, so I take the sign of the amount that we're moving and uh, I'm gonna check every single pixel as we go and just see if we overlap with anything. So if uh, our collider check against, and this is where I want my masks, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna add it here. So if we apply with solids at an offset um, of that, then we return true and stop moving. Otherwise, uh, now it increases by sign and then to be position that is plus equals sign. Okay, very simple. Move Y is gonna be exactly the same. something actually want to stop in that direction so it's kind of fly. Yeah, blah is what I've been using for my new game. You are correct. Um, okay, then update we want to track remainders so um, values of what we're moving, which I think I want to, do I want to round? I want to round, I want to round towards zero for this. Um, does truncating an integer, or just casting an integer always truncate towards zero? I don't know if it does. I think it, I'm gonna assume that it does. Um,
Okay, I'll explain this in a second here. Um, Should work unless I coded this terribly wrong. If it's like negative 2.6 and then it would be negative 2, negative 2.6 minus negative 2 plus 2, so it would be negative 0.6. That sounds right. Okay. Okay, so then in the. I haven't finished writing a player yet, that's okay. I just want to be able to replace in the game CPP, I want to add this to the player object, which is like. Should hit the thing slide and then stop. We'll keep moving horizontally, I guess. Um, and then I'm gonna include actual masks here. And then this floor. Let's call this floor. Yeah, right there. No, I don't want this there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. Okay. So we have an object. Um, we nice to be able to reset that moves. I think it moved properly. It's kind of hard to tell if what I'm doing is correct here. Hey, I am streaming. Good to see you too. Thanks for hanging out. Um, let me get the last slower. It looked like it was working. Yeah, that seems to be the behavior that I want. Okay, cool. Um, get in, get in places. Um, I guess I'll commit this so far. Uh, what do we do? Oh, I want to commit CMake again. CMake shift city does this ugly thing. So now I actually want to make the player controller because we have Clyde is working, we have a mover that can move you around, and we have uh, an animator working. So the next step is actually making the player do stuff. Um, which, yeah, getting slowly getting there. Um, I'm not going to make a state machine thing, I don't think. Yeah, it might be fun too, though, but for now I will not. Um, It'd be nice to come up with this stuff too, um, but I won't for now because it's going to take more time and I don't have a ton of time. I think I have about, about an hour and a half left today and then tomorrow I'm going to work, work on this all day and then that'll be that. That'll be the whole game. So uh, I actually don't know how much I'll get done at this point. We'll see because it's uh, 4.20, so 4.21. Um, okay.
So I'm gonna make a generic um, factory. This could be an object factory, I guess. Um, Feels cost factory. And this is gonna create the different kinds of objects that we have. Um, because the objects are gonna be basically just be a sum of their components. So this is where we're gonna create different kinds of objects. So I'll start by creating this player one. So this is basically going to be this game code that I have, except this stuff is going to go in here. Um, and then I guess this needs to take a world with me. Yeah. So we'll add the entity, then we'll add, I need to include all the components that I want. So our entity is here, and then we say we'll add an animator, uh, and we'll play this animation. Then we'll add a collider, which is going to be our um, hitbox, let's call it. And we'll add a mover, so it's hitbox to that. Uh, and then we'll also add a player component. There we go. Okay, so that should be the player. So now if I go to game, uh, and I can get rid of these, and instead I can include a, I still need, still need a collider because I need to create a floor. Uh, and then if I include uh, factory.h, I can say factory player, and I can say dr world, and at That should create a player, uh, except that it uh, doesn't. Uh oh, player update doesn't have that implementation. That makes sense because I didn't give one. Cool. There is our player. Very fancy. Um, okay, so next up, I guess I could add gravity to mover, but I think I'll do that from, maybe I should add gravity. Yeah, I think I want gravity in this thing. Um, start by zero. This should be multiple no as well. Okay, so then in our update. Should gravity be a component itself? Maybe. Yeah, I think in principle it maybe should be, but I think it's simpler right now if I keep it just part of the mover because the gravity is already gonna have to check if the mover exists and then apply gravity to it. So I think it's easier if it's just in the mover. It does make the mover a bit more complicated, but I think for simplicity's sake, um, or like <laughs> it makes more complicated purpose. Uh, for like the simplicity of components, like without adding more components, I think I'm just going to make it part of this component. But I, I agree that in general it maybe should be. But we only do it if we're not on the ground. Some 
I actually think this should not have, the player specifically should not have gravity because I'm gonna control it very manually and very specifically myself. Um, but for now, I will give it gravity. Cool. Getting there. Okay, so now let's add a simple jump button to the player. Um, I want a controls, I guess. Um, where do I want to put controls? I don't know where I want to put controls. Let's put it in the player for now. buffers to my jump button so you press jump slightly before you land on the ground you still jump. TL currently stands for Tiny Link, because this game is currently called Tiny Link, because I'm basically just making Zelda 2. Hey, thanks. Yeah, happy New Year to you too. I hope you're doing well. Um, okay, so button jump is pressed. Uh, we're going to grab our mover. And we're going to check if we're on the ground. I need to know what we were first. So if I want to add an on ground function to this, because Press the jump button and we're on the ground, then we'll set our I have to get the mover again. Okay, so I want the mover. Okay. So then we're gonna say um mover speed dot wise with negative one hundred. This is a simple simple thing. Oh and my button my jump button needs to update every frame. Because it has like stuff like buffers in it and stuff. Uh, left of this must be what? Left of this must be. Yeah, I can jump, and I can't jump while I'm in the air. Okay. It's working. Um, is this game using a custom engine and render? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's on my GitHub. I have it in the video description there, um, which you can see. Um, and 
and yeah, it is. Uh, so it's, it's using, right now it's using DirectX, but I have an OpenGL version too, so I can, I can swap between OpenGL and DirectX. And then it's using SDL2 for windowing and like rendering, or windowing and input stuff. Um, and yeah. And my goal is just to make a really quick game over the weekend, so I just wanted to like stream myself making an entire tiny platformer in two days. Um, so it's not going to be like a good game, but I'll put all the source code up and it'll exist and people can see how that all works. Um, so, so far I'm at this point, which is like, I think I'm like three hours in and uh, not a lot to show for it yet, but uh, I think it'll accelerate pretty soon here. How did I come up with this incredibly inspiring name of Blah? Um, I needed, I wanted to post it on GitHub and I needed to upload it somewhere. I needed a name and I couldn't think of a name and that's, that's how it got there. What do you have to do in studies to make games like Celeste? Uh, I think you just have to practice making stuff. Um, download Unity or Game Maker or something and just start making stuff. Um, I did not learn how to make Celeste in school. School didn't teach me anything. But learning and experimenting and trying stuff did. Um, and if school is helping you learn, then that's that's good too. It just didn't for me. I don't want to like tell you not to go to school if it's like working for you. Different Different people have different good ways of learning. Um, but for me, it was like a lot of practice and just experimenting and lots of learning. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, Max. I feel like it won't be, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. Player is working, kind of. Um, I'm gonna add a virtual uh, axis for move. I just do virtual stick. Virtual stick. It's not really a button. It's like this is like input. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely how I learned how to program and stuff, was I, I learned how to program by just like, I, I mean, I wanted to make games and I had Game Maker downloaded and I was like, well, I need to learn how to do this stuff if I want to like make anything. And I, at the start I made games without any programming, I just used Game Maker's like drag and drop interface and then slowly you, you like, you reach the, the, uh, the limitations of that and you want to make something that the drag and drop can't do, so you slowly like copy and paste code from online into your stuff and then start modifying it and then eventually you just kind of learn how to code and that's that's how I learned completely um, and just kept going with that. Very much like kind of stumbled into it like you're saying with the 3D animation. I don't know the, people keep asking me this and I actually don't know the switches. It's just like an LG keyboard uh, and I don't know, I don't remember, maybe it says in the back. I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know what switches it has in it. Uh, I think I downloaded Game Maker when I was like 12. Um, so I've been like coding and making games for about 15, 15 years.
Okay, this should allow me to move, but I'm gonna be really floaty. Like, yeah, very floaty. But I can move and I can jump. And I think I wanna do the old school thing in this game where once you jump, you kind of like are stuck going that way. So your acceleration turns off a lot. Or your air acceleration is gonna be way lower than your ground acceleration, I think. Um, and then your max speed, I'm gonna to have to start making max speed constants and stuff. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's just practicing. Like, you know, it's it can be hard to be stay motivated sometimes, but if you if you keep experimenting and like playing around with stuff and just like learning and find other people to talk to you about game dev stuff too, uh, you'll you'll get there. It's, it's just yeah, it's a definitely a learning curve, but it's it's really fun. I don't know. Um, and it's been uh, it's been a long time for me now, so I kind of forget how it what I you know how I actually got to where I am making stuff or like my knowledge base um, but yeah it was mostly just like a, just literally this uh, if you for my entire teenage and then adult life <laughs> um, yeah what do I want to do here I need constants so I need a constant So I think I want. Okay, so let's do let's do um, got this move first at the top. So I'm gonna do horizontal movement, and then I'll do jumping. So first we'll grab the, our input direction as an integer value, and then we're going to increment our speed. Uh, which is going to plus equal input um, times. Uh, I guess if we're on the ground, we need to know if we're on the ground. So auto on the ground is going to be on the ground. So if we're on the ground, um, we accelerate by max or ground acceleration. Otherwise, we accelerate by. I need to assign these to values. I can't just like leave them like that. Also, because they're cross expressions. Um, and then multiply by time, double time. I'm um, sorry. The game of making my brother? It's going really well. Yeah, I'm gonna keep working on that next week. I just wanted to make a tiny thing over the weekend. Um, kind of just to like have some code up on like how I make stuff right now. Um, Directly trying to frame weight slash time offsets. Um, yeah, it's not gonna have ticks. It's just gonna have uh, delta time. Uh, but the delta time is actually at a fixed frame rate, so it's actually always 60 FPS. Um, and I'm just kind of gonna always use that. I would like to update my framework so that it has a better uh, update loop. Right now, it's kind of like fixed time step only. I'd like to add like a two, like a fixed time step, and then like a. a a vary, varying time step, I don't know what to call it, um, that actually like is just can update at whatever you want. Um, but yeah. I don't know what WPS is. I never took a programming course. Uh, I, no, I mean, I guess I did, but not until I already knew how to code. So I, I went to university for two years and I dropped out. Um, by the time I went to university, I'd already been coding for like six or seven years. Um, so, because I went to university when I was, yeah, 19. So yeah, I'd already been coding for a few, like a bunch of years. Uh, I've already coded in like GameMaker and Flash uh, and some C++ and some Java uh, and a lot of PHP. So I, I, I'd already been coding a lot. And by that point, I didn't find school to be that useful for me. Um, but I'm also not a very good school environment learner. Like I just don't excel very well in that. Um, but other people super do. And to them, like school was super important. And I respect that a lot. But yeah, for me it was not. Uh, it didn't didn't work. Uh, 
Um, I also find so many resources online like that I didn't, like a classroom setting didn't help me that much. Like I just could watch YouTube videos and experiment and that was enough for me um, to figure out what I wanted to do. And actually copying a lot of other people's code. So like on GameMaker, I, I would just like go to the GameMaker forums and like look at how other people were doing movement or something and just copy and paste their movement code into my game and then it worked. And then I'd slowly, you know, iterate on it or tweak it or whatever. And that's how, that's how I learned to code. Is by copying and pasting and then editing. Um, okay, acceleration, and we want max speed. Yeah, rest in peace, Flash. Uh, Flash was awesome. I, I, yeah, I don't think anything has really replaced what it was. Um, I know like there's HTML5 games and stuff now, but I don't, I don't think they. It's nothing's quite at what Flash was, um, so it's kind of too bad. But I understand why it's being deprecated. Okay, what do I, what am I doing? Max speed. So if this is larger. This. If we're on ground, we're gonna use ground. Otherwise, we use max. I actually don't know if I want different max speeds for if you're on the ground or not, but. But for now, I'll assume that I do. Um. This approach function just basically moves towards a value um, and doesn't pass the value. So it's better than like plus equals because then it plus equals just like flat past the value. This will approach the value but not step past it. Um, so we take the sign of our speed, so that we're approaching the direction we're moving, and then I don't know, like 2000. So we accelerate back towards our max speed if we passed it. Um, I'm not clamping to the max speed because I like it that it like, that's what we did in Celeste where it like just lurps back towards your max speed. I think that's kind of cool. Um, okay, and then so I want max ground speed to like 60, I don't know, max air speed to go 70. Ground acceleration could be like 300 and air acceleration. I want to try this thing with old school games where they have really slow air acceleration. Don't know if I'll like it, but I'll, I'll try it. Um, and I, I need friction, I forgot about friction. And my jump is crazy. Um, and gravity sucks. There's a lot of things that are sucky right now. Um, I think it's like, with HTML5, like I think HTML5 is getting to be pretty feature, like complete. Like it, it probably can do all the things that Flash can, but Flash had like a built-in animation system that people really utilized to really cool extents. So now to have that same thing in HTML5, you have to like build all that animation stuff yourself or like find a way to import Flash animations yourself. Like it's not simple like to just reproduce all the vectorized, you know, it's, that, that system seems like it's kind of missing, um, which was really cool for Flash. And then also I think, yeah, the community aspect of it, there's just so much like Flash culture and like people making stuff and that's kind of like all gone and I don't think HTML5 has the same kind of like um, people making stuff like Flash did. I could be wrong though, maybe I'm just not looking in the right places. How does my previous experience with Celeste help decide your current approach? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, it influences it a lot, um, for sure. It's just a learning experience, so I learned a lot, and now my stuff's different. Um, but yeah, I'm using C++ because, um, well, I wanted to learn C++, and also it runs on consoles. Like, Celeste did not run on consoles natively. We had to do some intense porting stuff to make that work, because it's C Sharp, and C Sharp does not run on most consoles. Um, but C++ does, so C++ I can just put on consoles, which is cool. Is this for a jam? It's kind of for a jam. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick weekend game. 
uh, and then post all the code online just so people can see like here's how I'm making stuff in C++ right now. Um, max speed. Okay, this is working. It just feels like garbage. I need uh, friction. I'm trying the old school stuff where it like, oh, the, like the jump, oh, I don't have reset. Um, I kind of want to add a reset here. No, I'll come back to that. Um. Friction still feels, or ground acceleration still feels really slow. Am I still, I'm still working on, uh, yeah, it's XOK. Um, still working on that. Yep, I, I mean, I haven't really like over Christmas and New Year's and stuff. We, we didn't work the last two weeks, but I'm back on Monday. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's tough to balance that stuff. I, I definitely don't work on my side projects as fast when I have a full-time job program programming as well. Um, so it's just like, yeah, it depends. I, I don't work on like the side project every day. I work on it like once or twice a week when I feel motivated and stuff. Um, and then otherwise I just, yeah, do chill things because I just worked all day. <laughs> Uh, so the side project moves a lot slower than like the XOK game is like moving a lot faster because you know it's, we're doing stuff on it Monday to Friday. Um, okay, I really need to add a reset button actually because I want to be able to test this, uh, and I want or I could just make the floor wider. Um, I don't mind constantly programming though, like. Um, Okay, I'm gonna work on the jump a bit now, um, which is where I need to do, I think I'm gonna turn the gravity off on the mover for the player. I'm gonna use the mover gravity for other objects, um, but not the player. It's getting pretty dark outside. Yeah, the camera's still fine, but. Okay. Yeah. So goodbye gravity, we'll do the gravity here instead. Um, Gravity is way higher. But now I want to do this thing that I really like where if you hold, well, okay, I need to do variable jumping and I want to do peak jumping. Um, <clears throat> Um, let me see how that feels with higher gravity. We really need higher gravity. Higher gravity is good. I need to add variable jumping. Or something like that. 
player is going to need a okay so then if you press jump and you were on the ground I'm going to say uh, jump timer is equal to jump time and then well input is held if jump time is larger than zero we're going to constantly set our move speed to that and we're going to reduce jump time this is how i'm going to do variable jumping so what i'm doing is saying that like every oops that's wrong variable um, when you jump it's at the timer to my jump time which is in this case 0. 0.15 seconds and then if you're well, jump time is larger than zero. Just set this, like, set your vertical speed to negative 100, which is up in this case. Up is negative in my world right now. Um, and then, if you let go of jump in here, so if you're not holding jump, then we cancel the jump timer. I typed this wrong, this should be here. This will, yeah, basically do variable jumping. Um, and then I'm gonna do some stuff with gravity as well. So if I hold jump, I jump that high. If I just tap jump, I jump that high. It's not super different yet, but that actually already feels pretty good. Oh, I want, I don't want friction while I'm in the air. I think I'm just gonna do zero friction when I'm in the air. Just try like zero friction in the air. What did I miss? Um, well, we got jumping. Um, and we got moving and we got uh, input stuff. Um, I think the variable jump needs to be slightly, I'm not sure. Maybe slightly longer, like 20. We'll try this negative 10, I think. That feels better. I think that's about, about the size I want. I wonder if you shouldn't, I'm not sure how high you should jump yet. It's gonna depend a bit on enemies. Um, how many time took to make the model movement? Um, well, the original peak weight one we did in four days, so it's probably only like, over that four days, we kind of worked on the Madeline movement. For the final game, we worked on it the whole two years. Uh, down, down to the end, we kind of kept tweaking Madeline's movement, so it was a long, long process. I'm going to do something with the gravity where if you're at the peak of your jump and you're holding jump, it slows gravity down so you kind of float. So if, um, so if you're not on the ground, which is when gravity should be happening in the first place, um, if you are, if your speed, the absolute value of y speed, smaller than let's say 20 and you're holding the jump button down uh, then your gravity is going to be reduced a lot so this makes the peak of your jump more hovery that's too hovery if you're holding jump. But that's generally what I want. It's just too hovering now. This needs to be 0.4. And then I don't love the height of this jump. I kind of want it to be lower, but I want it to be faster. So that means I need to let's make this higher.
Thanks. Yeah, I, th I think it's getting there. I'm doing a weird thing where like, yeah, the you don't have any or very much air uh, friction or acceleration, and I'm doing that on purpose because I want it to be kind of old school. Like in those old school games, you jumped and then you can't like go back or whatever. Um, I want that for this because I think it's going to make combat interesting. Um, but we'll see how it feels. Definitely kind of weird, but I think I like it. I think the jump height needs to be lower because I don't want to be able to jump. Maybe I do want to jump on enemies. We'll see. I have to start making enemies soon, I guess. Um, do you search sprites based on Z value or do you let them, the order decides the depth? Um, I actually am sorting them by an integer depth depth value, so the components have a depth integer value, and then I sort them by that before they get rendered. Um, so I'm not using Z values. It would be a good idea to try that, but I, I yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that. One thing I don't like is if you like, since the acceleration while you're in the air is so low, if you hold left, jump, and then you keep tapping jump, if you do it properly, um, you like don't really stop, even though I'm not pressing any buttons for a long time, which I don't love. Um, which means that maybe when you jump, your speed should be Try this. It might be really weird though. I think I like that. It's kind of weird, but I think I like it. Actually, maybe I'll make it higher. What if I made you go faster? This is going to be probably bad. Means your jumps are kind of always the same because it's always based on. Yeah, maybe fine. I like that. Let me try it. Doesn't starting them lose more texture swaps? Uh, no, because they're all one atlas right now. Um, it's all one big atlas. Um, so at the moment, no. Uh, I, like generally, like. Yeah, everything is one big atlas, so it doesn't matter. Um, and that was the same for Celeste. Celeste was one big atlas. Um, my si other side project is one big atlas. This is gonna be one big atlas. So if the sprites got to a certain size, then I would probably start sorting them. Um, yeah, I, I'd either look into the Z depth thing like you're talking about, or split the atlases up into like kind of, you know, backgrounds, tile sets, objects, things that make sense. Um, but yeah, you're correct. If, if I didn't have one big atlas, and I wasn't Z ordering them, then yeah, it would. But currently my rendering stuff doesn't have, it doesn't have anything for like, yeah, add it to into account transparency and stuff like that. Like if sprites have any transparent pixels, it would get uh, gnarly. Yep, I have the Atlas Packer already implemented here. So um, actually I could go to the game I implemented it on the stream earlier today, so if I if I go in the game and go to the drawing, I can actually go um, batch, I'll, uh, draw a texture, and I'll get the content in Atlas. So let's draw the Atlas at the top left of the screen, you can see it. So there's the Atlas right now, which is not, not a lot in it, um, but yeah. Actually, there's two atlases. There's the gameplay one, and the text is in its own atlas. So the text is technically would, would be swapping draw calls. Okay. Okay, this is feeling... Cool. I mean, I'll push this so far. My teammate got ugly again. Yeah, I made it. Uh, 
Uh, I need a reset key. So what I might actually do is move loading into here. I think I'm gonna do that. Um, so loading can go. Actually, no, I'll leave this like this and I'll add this to a, a load map. I need a way to clear the world because otherwise it's like keep adding objects um, and I don't have that yet so I'm gonna add that quickly to the world I need a clear function um, that's not what the hell? I don't know what that did did it actually add the where did it put this? Um, let me say I didn't add it. Thanks, Visual Studio. to reload the map now because it's getting really annoying. I need F2. F2 will reload the map. Yeah, the Alice Packer's in there. And yeah, reloading works. take a quick two minute break to get more water and then I'll work on a tiny more player stuff and then I'll probably call it for today I'll probably end it like 5 30 my time which is like 25 minutes um and then tomorrow I'm going to work on hopefully turning this into an actual game now because I have the bare bones kind of set up while on stream um and then tomorrow I'll try to get like uh basically making the game um I'm going to stream for longer tomorrow I'm going to stream for like hopefully about 12 hours 10 hours we'll see if I can actually do that that might be too much but we'll see and then hopefully I'll make a tiny, it'll be a tiny game and then it'll, I don't know, the source code will be on the internet. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the idea. Okay, so yeah, there's a bunch of big things that I wanna do. Like maybe I should make a little to-do list here of what needs to happen, but I need like, I need uh, tile sets um, so I can like, and tile sets and terrain. I have to add the grid collider actually. So I need tile sets and terrain so I can add a grid collider and make the grid exist. I need to have simple level loading. So I wanna add, uh, simple levels um, and I think I'm just gonna describe the levels in a text file because I don't think I have time to make like an actual level editor so it's gonna be like just gonna load from text files um, and then I'll just handwrite them and then I need uh, I want to make some basic player sprites and stuff and some basic sprites so I'll spend some time spriting at some point and then I need some enemies and the player attack <laughs> uh, so there's a we'll see if I can actually get much of this done but I think I think I can get like I think I can get there. Like this is already feeling pretty cool. Um, I think it's doable, but I should try to get some more in today before I stop, because I think otherwise I'll run out of time. So maybe today, quickly, I'll try to get tile sets in. Um, I think that would be really cool. And I think for now I'll just have single tiles, and then I'll add uh, I'll add tile like auto tiling later, like super simple. Um, auto tiling. Um, so wait, let me make a new. I don't know how big the. I think this should be. 
Can we get any? It's 325, but it's not. 325 is 8. 180 is that level, but 8? No, it's not. Um, my resolution is 320 by 180. Maybe I'll make the tiles 10 by 10. Is that weird? 10 by 10 tiles? It's kind of unheard of. Yeah, lots of boilerplate stuff, but I knew that was going to be kind of today. Like, I figured that was going to be most of today. Um, um, is 10 by 10 tiles weird? I feel like it's not. 325 by 10. Well, I don't have to do math that. It's 32 and 18. I think I'm going to make the tiles 10 by 10. That seems kind of weird. But on the other hand, I don't know if I care that much. I'll try it. Like maybe it's really bad and then I'll find out why it's really bad. The one thing I don't like is that this doesn't line up nicely. How many, is this even possible? This one always gonna be bigger. Maybe this is why I don't like 10 by 10. Could be 16 by 16, but that's getting pretty big feeling. Wow, that's so big. 16 by 16 is too big. This is supposed to be tiny. This game's literally called Tiny, Tiny Link. Um, how do I feel about eight by eight? Eight by eight's pretty small. Maybe I'll change the resolution to be smaller. But I do like that that is now nice. 10 by 16, whoa, higher tiles, taller tiles than wide. That's some, uh, I don't know how I feel with that. That is, that is actually pretty cool though, but I think I'll just do eight by eight. I think it's simple. I think I'll downsize the resolution a bit and make it eight by eight. Um, Three times 32, get crazy. <laughs> Native. <laughs> one by one tiles. Oh, just one tile per screen. Uh, so you can like run across the tops of screens, but nothing else. Um, okay, what do I want? I need another asset called tile set. I'm gonna copy, even though it's not actually a spread at all. I'm gonna copy this and call it tile set. Um, and it's gonna have, um, Do you prefer Mac OS or Windows? Um, I've just used Windows my whole life, so I'm just pretty used to Windows. But I don't know if I have a strong preference. Um, 
I find Windows easier to work on, but that's just probably because I've always used Windows. I have used Mac a little bit here and there throughout my throughout my life. I, I worked at an art gallery once doing web design for them, and I worked on Mac then. Um, and I've like made sure stuff compiles on Mac, but I haven't done a lot of like actual work on a Mac, so. Okay, I think this is all a tile set needs. I guess I give it a name. And then I think I will leave it like that. I guess I wanted to give it an ID as well. Because I want the IDs to be. Okay, well, I'll leave like this. I'll figure that out after. Um, so now my content needs to load this. I would like to try Linux more. I have a Linux distro, but I haven't used it much. So now I want to add the tile sets and pack them as well into the atlas. So we're going to do. I'll probably want another struct called tile set info. It can honestly, it's exactly the same as this. I don't need this this bullshit. Um. Whole block for the tile sets, and it's gonna, a bunch of it's gonna change. Get all the tile sets, tile sets folder, ends with a spray. Skip it. Info name. I wanna add this to this tile set info, and add to the atlas. This is where things get funky because um, I don't care about the frames in the tile set, I actually want to split them up into columns and rows. So I only want the first frame. Um, so I'm gonna say auto frame is equal to this first frame. Frame zero. And then I wanna split them up into the grid size. So I actually need a way to like, I should, I, I've never used tiles, but I, I should give it a shot sometime. Okay, I am getting close to having tile sets, I think. I sort of got distracted. I need to include game that looks like the values. Okay, so uh, now columns is going to equal to frame image width divided by game tile width. Okay. 
Okay, so now we go. How do I want to do this? Yeah, okay, this is fine. So Packer, we're gonna add a frame, but we're gonna get a sub image of this. Can I get some image? I can. Source rectangles and rectangle of x times game dot tile width. Okay, I need to make this a sub call. This is huge. Sub image. Auto sub image. Uh, auto sub rect. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the tile set and then I'm splitting it up, splitting up its like tiles into the individual images and adding the individual image to the, to the atlas. So I'm not adding the tile set as a whole to the atlas, I'm adding the individual tiles to the atlas. Um, yeah. Would Ace work as a tile map editor? Does that just not make sense? Um, I actually have done that before years ago um, when I didn't have a level editor and what I did was assign uh, objects to colors and then I'd say like okay if my room is 320 by whatever um, what's 320 by 8 that's not right 320 by 8 40 and then uh, 180 divided by 8 which is okay 23 so 40 by 23 I do this and then like you know white would be empty and then like Black would be, and maybe I'll do this for this game. Maybe this actually makes sense. You know, black would be solid or whatever. And then, you know, green would be player and uh, red would be whatever enemy. I'm not opposed to this. This might be better than the text editor. I definitely don't have time to make an actual level editor for this game. Like there's no way I'm gonna have time for that. Um, so maybe this isn't a bad uh, middle ground here. That might make a lot of sense. <laughs> okay, add the image to the atlas. Uh, pack index is assigned. I actually don't need to loop. There's no reason I should loop through this again. I can actually just put this here. So next up, let's say build the atlas and now I want to add all the tile sets. I'm going to copy this code again, even though it's quite different. Um, tile set info. Okay, getting the tile set that should be there. And now we want to just get all of the columns and stuff for it. So I need to copy this basically again, which is kind of silly, but so that. Um,
subtextures at given index, which is gonna be five. Um, See this new tile set ended up being new. Okay, it's in the Alice. And now if I make this tile set bigger, um, make it like 32. Um, each tile should be added. Let's make the tiles a bit different. Okay, well, I'll just have two different ones. It should add each tile. And it did. Okay, so we have all the tiles in the atlas, and we have the tile set. Um, yeah, because honestly, the alternative that I would do for like a text level right now um, would probably be, yeah, literally something like this. So like, um, if the room is 32, or what did I say, 40? probably do that which kind of sucks which is like editing this is going to be annoying <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Max. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a good good New Year's. Or had a good New Year's, I guess. Hmm. Writing bites? Basically, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to decide how I want to make levels for this thing because I don't have time to make a level editor. There's like no way. I mean, maybe there is a way. But I feel like realistically making a level editor is not... Like, I don't want to make a level editor for this um, given the time constraints. So I'm like, maybe I should just... Um, like, I should just use like some kind of text format or something, right? Um, or like images. Like, I could use images for the levels like this. Um, and just load like, oh, black is solids and white is nothing and green is player. But yeah, I don't know. Or I could use um, Ogmo editor or something. Um, or like tiled or like an existing editor that works. Um, I probably won't actually implement levels tonight. I'll probably just like sit on it or sleep on it or whatever. I sit on it. <laughs> I'll sleep on it. And. Uh, yeah, decide tomorrow. Okay, I'll quickly get, okay, we're getting closer here. So the collider, I'll make the grid collider quickly work. Um, so air is gonna be.
kind of quickly write the grid collision function. Um, yeah, I think images could work. Like, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a suitable answer. Yeah, this is all my own engine. Um, sorry, I'm just like writing this. Uh, Do I like CPP? Um, no. I mean, I like I like parts of it quite a bit. I enjoy lots of it. I don't love CPP in general. Like C++, like I, yeah, I have a lot of problems with it. But I do enjoy parts of it quite, quite a bit. It's a, it's a, yeah. I I, I feel confused about C++. <laughs> um, uh, I like a lot of the stuff it lets you do, but I feel like I feel like there's other languages that are being written now that are better than it, that do the same things. Um, like I'm excited about Zig and I'm excited about Rust um, and Beef and stuff like that, that look really good and do a lot of the things that I really like about well, C++, but don't have all the really ugly sides of C++. And I don't really blame C++, it just has a lot of baggage because it's old and has all these, yeah, it's trying to slowly morph into a different language than it is and it's, yeah. But I do enjoy parts of it a lot. I don't know why I ran the game because it doesn't actually matter right now. Yeah, Zig is looking really cool. I, I haven't actually tried it yet. But I would really like to try it. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm going to make the floor in the game a grid now just to test that out quickly. And actually, it's this to zero. And then the grid is, I think I said the grid was going to be. It's going to tell them 8 and it's like 40 by 23, which is kind of awkward right now. Let's sit there at all. Um, and then we'll say...
see if this works. Oh, that makes sense. You know, maybe I could make a little level editor quickly, but it feels like it's going to be out of scope for this. Like, I don't have a lot of time, so I feel like that's a bad idea. Um, I feel like it's a bad idea. Yeah, it's a bad idea. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's a bad idea. I have to keep saying that to myself. It's a bad idea, just so I don't do it. Um, I'm getting pretty close to stopping for today, and then tomorrow I'll work on actual gameplay stuff, and we'll hopefully get this into an actual game. Um, Check the so many problems with that code just there. Okay, cool. Sweet. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So we have great colliders, we have movement, we have jumping, we have basic stuff, we have basic animations. Um, maybe I'll quickly get tile rendering working just so that uh, I don't have to have the, colli the collision viewer open. Um, so to do that, I'll add a new component called uh, tile. Map. Tile map plus P. I just want to copy the other one already to this time. Okay. Um we need to have do we? Let me see. What do we need now? Um, how do I actually want to have this thing render? I think it's just going to be a grid of subtextures and you assign them. I think that's the easiest thing, and uh, yeah. Uh, no, we're gonna use memory for this again. It's way simpler. It's the way I have it set up. Don't 
above that, so whatever. Silver. Is this based on OpenGL? Uh, yeah, actually, right now it's um, I do have an OpenGL renderer, but actually, right now it's using DirectX. But I can swap to OpenGL uh, really easily. So I turn off DirectX and turn on OpenGL, and now it's using OpenGL. I just wrote an implementation for both OpenGL and DirectX, or DirectX D3, D11, or whatever. Set the texture or clear it, and then rendering. Just loop over all of them. And then, my sound weird, but watching someone code on a second screen is kind of relaxing. <laughs> cool, I'm glad it's relaxing. explain as much as I'm doing more. I think I'm just getting a bit tired, but we're getting there. Uh, this tile map should at least be displayed soon, so that's cool. Um, I got a game now, and I add a tile map. Castle tile set, I create a tile map, and then I want to set the tile map to the same 
as the floors, which right now I have to do that manually, but that's fine, I'll do it manually for now. Um, Find the top. Well, no. Set cells on this one, which will just copy the other one. And I'll do tassel, uh, tiles. I'll just do the first tile for now. There's an auto this. No conversion to const. It's not, what is this? Oh, this actually copies the subject too. That's fine, because it copies it. So, yeah. Sorry, now I'm just like muttering to myself <laughs> as I like try to wrap this up. Okay, that should show tile sets in theory, unless I fuck something up. No, it does, okay. Cool, it works. The game, is a, it's a real game, I'm done. I can walk away happy. Um, don't need to do anything else. This is a, a finished game. I want the player deaf to be above this though, above the wall. Um, where's factory? Um, yep, Steam, new Steam release coming out, coming in hot. Um, Expectations. You need a refund before you even had it. Um, my days been wrong here. No. Which makes blah and tiny. Need to work on Mac OS. Do you think you include some kind of. Uh, yeah, I can take a look here. Um, 
Would I be okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. It de unless it like, um, yeah, adds something really weird or whatever, then that should be fine. But if you submit a pull request, I will take a look. I'm totally cool with that. I haven't tested on macOS in like months, so I'm not surprised there's something wrong. But I would, that would be sweet if you want to do that. I would be super into that. Um, I'll push what I have so far on tiny link. Oh, I didn't fish, fix CMake first. Ruined. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna make a to-do list for tomorrow. And then I'm gonna stop, because I, I, I need to stop at six and it's 10 minutes to six. Um, okay, so tomorrow I need to do um, player sprite. I need to do, um, that's it really. No, I need to do um, some kind of level loading. Level loading. Um, basic auto tiling. I might not even do auto tiling. I might just make it so that every kind of tile is just a, oh, like, yeah, we'll see. You might not even want tile sets, so. Um, and then I want to have sword attack. Health. And then uh, probably like three enemy types. And one boss. And then I need a... Uh, a game, I need a reset state, so if you die, it resets the current room. So I need room loading. Well, that's kind of level loading. Um, but I'll add level transitions, I guess. There's a lot to do. I don't know if we'll get to this all, but I'm gonna really try hard. Um, and then some background tiles would be cool, but that might be out of scope. Oh, interesting. Including initializer list. Oh yeah, I wonder why mine doesn't complain about that. An arcade survival tiny link? Yeah, that could be cool. I was thinking like, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. I was, I was thinking about making it like an actual little level, but an arcade thing might be cool. Oh, I see, interesting. Yeah, I never set up fine package because I never figured out how to use CMake's fine package. So I just like I was like, yeah, I'll just like hard add, like code add these values. That's super fair though. Um, yeah, that seems ideal to me. I just I just never learned how to actually use that. But if you know what you're doing, that would be sick. Um, I think this is basically what I want to do in the scope of this. Um, I think this would be pretty sweet if I could achieve this. Okay, that's my plan. Um, at that point, I think I'm gonna call it and I'll be back tomorrow um, to finish this up and see how far we get. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Um, yeah, I appreciate hanging out. Hopefully it was interesting, I don't know. I'm doing this mostly because I'm hoping it's interesting. Um, and I'll be, obviously I'm finding some weird bugs with my stuff, so that's good too. I need to look into the, I'm gonna look into the, my vector class tonight and see what was exploding earlier. I don't know what I was doing. It might be my, it's either my spring class or my vector class, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, I will be back um, tomorrow to finish this up. Oh, copy the DLL manually, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'll see. 
see you tomorrow. Maybe if you're there, I will be. So uh, we're working on stuff. And then I'll try to hopefully have this finished. And then, yeah, I guess after this is done, I'll put it, I mean, it's already all on GitHub, but hopefully it's an interesting learning resource, or at least you can see how either dumb or amazing I am at programming. One, one or the other, maybe both. Okay, thanks. <laughs>